Yeah. Yeah. All right. Folks, welcome back. We are now back in a regular session. And so at this point, we are going to walk ins. Are there any walk ins? We have to vote to. Uh, no, we already did. No, we already did. Before executive session. Okay. Yeah. Any walk ins? Yes. I need you to come down to the uh, table, if you don't mind, and identify yourself and your address. Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. I need your name and your address. My name is William Thomas Tibbetts. My address is 79 Jericho Road, Situa Mass. Good evening. What can we do for you? Um, I just have some questions um, about some business that happened uh, between Cumberland Farms, uh, the town of Situate, myself, uh, my mother, and my father, who are my partners, half partners with me. Just so that you um, understand, Mr. Tibbetts, walk in is, and in, in we can give you five minutes to talk. Um, we can't have a discussion or dialogue because I just have an questions. Open, I don't need to talk. I, I, I just want to give you kind of the parameters of what we have here, okay? Because it's not a posted agenda item, we can't get into discussion because it would violate the open meeting law that the state sets, not us. It's set by the state. So okay. we're happy to hear your questions. Sure. Um, and um, Thank you. just to be uh, aware that about five minutes is what we we're willing to okay, give, great. and then we move on, okay? Um, Feel well, free. I've had plenty of time to think about it. Um, thank you for welcoming me, me, you, to your meeting. Um, hopefully everybody here can keep an open mind and hear what I have to say without interrupting me. Um, maybe you can bend the rules and give me more than five minutes, but we'll see. Um, just a little background about myself. Um, I've been, I was born here. I've been here my entire life. Um, <clears throat> my grandfather started building houses back here in 1953. He built over 200 houses in this town. My father was a builder in this town. I had dreams of one day be becoming a property owner and a builder and a, and a successful businessman, as well as a professional hockey player. Um, I played professional hockey, didn't go as to planned um, because of some other things. But my life was going great up until um, probably right around the time where I um, was told that Cumberland Farms had backed out of our 40-year land lease where I was the tenant. Now, I've never had a good job since I got done playing hockey. I was finally going to have a couple bucks. And um, the, rec the reason that they were quitting in the letter, and personally I've had dinners with both of the people, it was because that they were being made to put the pumps behind the building. They had m numerous emails and phone calls, three meetings, they canceled the fourth. Now I'd like, to read, I'd like to read to you here on page 70 of the zoning bylaws. It actually speaks uh, directly to the village business overlay district zoning. And the reason that I targeted this area in this town, everyone said, you're crazy to go back there after all you've been through. I said it's the best deal around right now. So it's the best bang for your buck. Situates blown up in real estate since 2000, 2004, and on. Now here it is, Situates building, and I can't be a part of it. My family can't be a part of it. Um, the purpose of the village business overlay district is to promote opportunities for local small-scale businesses, encourage alternative modes of transportation, such as public transit, bicycling, and walking. Provide for higher density mixed use and multifamily housing in village areas. Provide for a variety in residential housing development patterns in which reflect the unique characteristics of each sub-area. Increase the production of housing affordable to low and moderate income households and encourage efficient provision of necessary utilities and community services. The village overlay business, the village business overlay district will not change the zoning of the underlying district which can continue to be applied except where an applicant 
applicant voluntarily wishes to use provisions of this section 560. So how this reads to me is not only is it welcome and no problems with the zoning, it also says that it, it wants um, community services. Now, the gas prices, um, the three dollar coffees everywhere, uh, the fifteen dollar bagel and the co coffee. Everybody can't sustain this throughout there. This was an alternative um, way to make money for the town. Um, I calculated you're losing three million dollars a year uh, in 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 business here without this. Um, I don't think the town can afford to turn down people like Cumberland Farms and my family. Um, I know a lot of people around here. A lot of people don't like me. A lot of people like me. I'm not focusing on that. I'm doing good. I'm focusing on my future, my family's future, the future of this town. I'm running against you for state, uh, pardon me, uh, town selectmen. I wish you nothing but the best. Um, I certainly will talk to people here, older ladies and town people who've been here for hundreds of years with more respect than you've done on the videos I've watched. Um, I don't, I don't agree with a lot of the things that are going on. I'm almost done. I don't a lot of agree with all, a lot of things that are going on here. Um, what is the significant, significant public benefit to let uh, 70 units go into a parking lot when they're only giving you 2.2 million dollars and the guy that's going to get the 70 units in the lot is going to make hundreds of millions? Doesn't seem like a fair trade-off. Mr. Chair, may I ask a question? Sure. Mr. Tibbetts, I just, uh, as John, as Mr. Dana, as Mr. Chairman said, we can't really discuss something that's not on the agenda, okay. but I have one question. Sure. Has this been before the planning board um, in an official meeting, and did they put in, did they apply to do the development? Um, so when I was, um, the guy, Dan Monger, who uh, represented Cumberland Farms, was on the planning board here um, when the, it got denied. Uh, Bill Orenberger told me, uh, we hate Dan Monger around here. We think he's a punk. I'm sorry. Was, did That's you what say he said. They, they de you so Cumberland, went before Cumberland the Farms town and, and was uh, Dan Monger was representing them. I watched the videos. Uh, they had no teeth. Um, they got pushed around. Um, they were making them put the pumps behind the building. No canopies, lots of shrubbery and grass, a smaller building. Cumberland Farms is the number one convenience store in the world the number one and it's Thank a New England based I'll, I'll chain. Make sure that um, I look up at the it's a uh, New England based chain and it's a local uh, landlord and it's 40 years and I and and, and, and I could have done the condos and I could have done that stuff it, 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 uh, but to put more uh, uh, that takes millions of dollars I don't have 2.2 .2 million dollars so you can fix the sewer problem down Cedar Point and that's the significant public benefit, as I understand it, for the John Drew project. And I don't have, um, uh, I'm just a small time businessman who had a dream living down Sand Hills. There was 5,000 people when I was growing up here. I played street hockey on Jericho Road because there were no cars going by. All right? Now there's 25,000 people down here about, if we want to be honest, and probably about 50 to 100 in the summertime sometimes. And you can't pick and choose and play a monopoly with people's lives on what businesses can and can't go in here when it's zoned for it and when it's legally that. Ann Burbine cannot say, one quote was, Mr. Tibbs, we don't I want the to gateway to, I'll finish, this is the last comment, you've, you've thank you Mr. Denny. We don't want the gateway to situate to be a gas station. Pardon me, but the gateway to situate is a dilapidated medical building, a Dunkin Donuts, a construction lot, a train station, a transfer station, a doggy daycare, an animal hospital, okay, a, a, a golf course, a, a, a welcome addition would have been the Cumberland Farms. And um, I think I did this the right way. Um, grown up a lot over the years. I just want people to keep an open mind. When next time I come before you with the project, if it ever happens again, you don't do what you just did to me and my family. We've no, been for, here for hundreds of years. First of all, I'm Mr. not Tennis. going anywhere. You, you, you Thank didn't come you for your time. Us. All right. Thank God you very much. Bless. I appreciate it. Are there any other walk-ins? All right. Seeing none, we're going to move on to the next, which happens to be the report of the town administrator. Jim. Very quickly, 
Uh, first on the storm over the weekend, uh, we kind of caught a break. The storm came further north than we thought, turned mostly to rain and snow. Uh, we did have some minor flooding as expected. Luckily that uh, the water receded prior to the drop in temperature, so we didn't have that freeze, especially on a cold parkway. Uh, the highway department did a really nice job in some trying conditions. They actually brined the whole town Thursday and Friday, pre-treated. Uh, and then on Saturdays, the temperature dropped, and Kevin's here. Uh, we, they used our new molasses salt, uh, which activates much lower temperatures than our current salt. So uh, it really did a nice job. Uh, we do have some problem areas that I think everybody's aware of that we keep working on. Obviously, the thaw and freeze cycle of the next couple of days, people are going to need to be careful driving. The crews are out all day Monday. They were out all day today, but things are going to freeze and thaw, so people need to be careful. But uh, kudos to the highway department for doing a really nice job in some pretty trying conditions over the weekend. Uh, we had our, <coughs> the MMA annual conference this week, and as part of that, uh, our health insurance provider, Maya, provides the range for health insurance increases for the upcoming year. Uh, the rates will be increased on a range of a minimum of minus 7%, with an average of 0.6% and a maximum of 5%. Uh, that's pretty good news for us. Financial forecast, we had that at 8%. So the worst we're going to do is 5 So we picked up 3%. On a $6 million plus dollar budget, that's about $180,000 we picked up right there. And that could be even lower uh, when we get our actual rate. So that's good. Uh, the fire boat that was approved at the town meeting last spring, we have a bid opening next week on the 31st. We'll see how that comes in, how many bids we get. Uh, grant uh, scorecard. For the first couple weeks in January, we're already at $94,000 right off the bat, so we're off to a strong start. Uh, that $2.2 million grant last year is going to make it hard to top last year, but uh, we're going to plug away at it. And then I know uh, Mara had wanted to mention, make a mention of our wellness award, so our staff is here for that. Uh, so I'll just cede that to Mara real quick. Rather than do it myself, I'll have Mara do it. And Pam's here, right? So yeah, I'm representing them You all. are representing them all? Nancy Holt. And Nancy. <laughs> So uh, just for purposes of everyone, Situate was awarded the Newcomer Award into the Maya um, Annual Award. So if folks out there don't know, Maya is our insurance agency that we moved to about two years ago. And they have been a great partner with Pam and some folks on the school side, as well as Nancy, Julie, and some other folks in your office, um, putting together a wellness program uh, for our employees, because we all know that, you know, uh, keeping our employees healthy um, certainly helps them from a personal as well as a professional aspect. So I love some of the stories that you did with doing stretching <coughs> or teaching the plow drivers how, uh, you know, an appropriate time to review that is teaching them to get out and stretch and remain healthy and, and nimble, um, as well as yoga. Is some of DPW, I think, did you do yoga with? or? Yeah, we've done yoga. For anyone can do it, but um, the school, a lot of school people participate. Um, Kevin Cafferty actually participates in the yoga program. Um, I'll have to see that. Yeah. You don't invite us, Pam. No, why is somebody no, no, no. laughing at poor Kevin? That's not nice. <laughs> Kevin and I are actually doing Zumba now. Oh, okay. Um, that's Great. quite comical, but a really good time and a nice exercise program. Comical watching me try to do it. That's yeah. yeah. Well, we were um, presented with a nice award at the, the uh, convention so and called up, so I was there to take it on your behalf. Very proud of all of you. So here, this is for you and all of the associates. Yeah. I, just, I just want to um, thank Julie Kelly in my office. She says um, she's taken this under her wing not really wanting to, and she's done a really good job with it, so I want to give her credit. Thanks, Julie. Thanks, Pam. <coughs> All right, so... Is that the last thing? I think that's it for um, for the report. So if that's the case, then let's get to our 6.30 uh, discussion on the uh, vote discussion flagpole donation for the public safety complex and the Situate Town Library. Um, Tony Machini is the individual. He's not here, but um, and he can't because he actually uh, works for FEMA and he actually travels to various places throughout the country helping out um, those who are distressed. But for those of you who don't know who Tony Machini is, Tony had actually donated a flagpole over at the um, athletic field and it's like a hundred foot flagpole that they put up at the football field and so he personally paid for the installation and that's what's being used and so what's being proposed now is that um, 
I can get here. I'm not sure the height of the uh, public safety. Um, do you have it there? The, well, there's uh, an eight back up. No. Well, what it is is that, <laughs> thanks. My, my thing went off. Uh, this, the size of the flagpole, he'd like to put a larger one there for the public safety building and take the one that's there and move it over to the library is what his proposal is. And he's going to pay for all of it. So what he was hoping is to get permission from the board to be able to um, allow the board to say, yes, you can go forward and do that if that's what you'd like to do. And so um, I told him I'd bring it to the board and see what the board wanted to do if they'd like to have a much larger, I think the size is what he's thinking of, a very large one over here at the public safety building and then the one they're putting at the library. So that was for a discussion for the board. See what your thoughts are. Great idea. Good. That was very generous of them. Yes. It was very generous. Have, um, at, has the police department and fire department opined on making sure that it's just in a place that's not obstructing? Not yet, but I figured what I would do is first find out if that's the case because obviously if there's a helicopter you're going to be yeah. using it, we've got to make sure that the pole's <laughs> not too high so that interferes with it, but at least area. first get a green light from the board to say, let's take a look at it. Um, and as far as placing at the library, the same kind of conversation should be had with the director there. And um, you know, I'm sure that we could find I'm surprised we don't have one there already. Um, it was on the wish list. <laughs> Your wish, their wish is now That's coming true. Yeah. So there we go. But yeah, operationally, just have to have that conversation with Kevin Kelly. And the, Perfect. I think it's great. All it's right. very generous. Um, I'm not sure if we need a vote on that. I just want a discussion, at least that the board is a it says vote. So maybe just a vote to go accept forward. Accept the donation? To accept the donation to go forward and come back with maybe the plans, if that's mm -hmm. okay for future, so it's, we have an idea where and everything else. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Sure. Move to accept the donation of a flagpole for the public safety complex in the Town of Situate Library um, from Tony Machini. Second. Motion by Mr. Vignani, seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Let's Can move we on. Get a letter, maybe. Should we have sure. Lorraine? Yes. Yeah. Can you write a letter to him, just thanking him for? Sure. All right. After right. <laughs> All right. So let's go on to a 6:40 discussion vote. Sewer privilege fee waiver request for 2731 Hood Road, and I think Father Pashoy, you're here. Good evening. If you could, could you come down to the uh, table here with people who are involved and identify yourselves for the public? Welcome to town. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Father Pichoy Mikhail. Uh, I live in Marshfield, but I'm responsible for the Church of St. Mary and St. Mark in 2731 Hood Road. Good evening. And with evening. you are I'm gentlemen? Jeff Morris. Uh, I live in Marshfield, but I grew up in Situate, and I've done a lot of the site work there since they bought the church. I put in, uh, well, I'll explain in a few minutes. Okay. But, uh, so I'm going to be doing the work regardless of what we're doing. Fair so enough. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, uh, my name is Farouk Youssef. Uh, I'm an architect. I live in Hull, 53 Edgewater Road, and I'm a part of the con me member of the church, and it did all the drawing for the addition. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. All right. So. You are looking for, in essence, um, you, you, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there is the present church of St. Mary and St. Gregory. St. George. St. George, I apologize. Um, and that there was a um, sewer connection uh, that was put in for the church? That church. Okay. Yeah. And that next to the church, formerly known as St. Francis, so people on TV have an idea of what we're talking about, there is the center, if, there is, if, not, if I'm not mistaken, like a... Uh, a little gymnasium, some classrooms, some showers, and things. That's that's the other building that's next to it, correct? Correct. But the, it was my understanding. It was a, a school, and it closed for about 12 years old. It was in horrible conditions, and but we are not using it for that. It is a, it will be Sunday school uh, activity, Sunday school uh, classes after the church, which an essential part of our worshiping it's not separate or and then we'll have it uh, we'll do some activities for the kids during summer uh, summer vacation uh, i mean uh, school vacations yep. and weekends that's all so that's and uh, for because it was one system so we thought we were under under uh, we under or we, under the impression that it is one fees that the 
the Catholic uh, Diocese of Boston, the Archdiocese paid the fees to connect the sewage. Uh, so they never connected to any building. I think they just extended to the property, but they didn't connect it to the church, neither to the church nor to the school. So what, at least we were under the impression it is one thing. So that, and then we got surprised when we applied to connect the sewage to the church that we are asking to pay for the fees to the building. All right. So in other words, because sewer was put in there, there's a betterment uh, fee that's paid uh, for connecting. That's typically what happens when you have a house or, or a structure or a business or something. You pay for the betterment fee. And you're saying the archdiocese had paid its fee, but it never connected the church, nor did it connect its um, school or what was no, like exactly. a center repair center. Correct. And Correct. so when you purchased it, they paid the fee, one fee, but because there is um, the additional building next to it, the school, if you will, um, that's an additional fee that's being charged to you. That's right. And actually, in, when we bought the property, in the description of the property, it said town sewage. And when we moved there, we didn't know that it's actually not physically connected to the town. Okay. So, so that's how we, that's where we are right now, basically. So it was still on septic at that time when you purchased uh, the, it? Uh, when we bought it, yes. Okay. But okay. now the church is now connected to the, to the town sewage. We didn't connect the water yet to the school. We're still doing the, you know, the bathrooms and things like that, so. Okay, and you're here because you're seeking a waiver on the connection to the, um, the school portion? Exactly. The center? Okay. Exactly. All right, and um, you went to the um, sewer department, and the sewer department indicated that you needed to pay the additional fee. Dr. Morris actually did, yeah. Mm -hmm. when, when I got involved with this project, uh, it was right when they first bought the church, and I went down there to, to show them how to get in, and the first thing we noticed right away, there was no water in the church, even though it had bathrooms, faucets, and everything else. And I called the town, and they sent some guys down. And they came back, and they said, uh, well, the reason there's no water here is because the, the pipe hasn't been connected out at the street. Yeah, we put a new main down the street about 10 years ago, and the church never hooked up to it. The water so, or to sewer? The water. Right, the water. So okay. the whole time that church had the people sitting there, babysitting the church, there was no water at that church. Were they on well water? No, there's no well, there's no, Shut as far down. as I know, there's no well water. There. So that was at some point it was disconnected. It was disconnected. Okay. And so the first thing I had to do is, is uh, get permission to, to get, you know, to go out and hook up. And when I, I told the water department, they said, you better do it quickly because we're paving Hood Road in two days. And so I had to he basically, saved, he saved us actually. Yeah, if I interrupted. Basically, <laughs> dropped everything and went down. Got you know, we had to cut the road, put the pipe in, and they got water. Well, then they said we'd like to hook up to town sewer too because the stub is there. The stub was put in, you know, whenever they did the Hood Road pipeline. Yep. And I went down. I got the permit, and I, they said you know, it's 50 bucks. So I wrote a check for 50 bucks and, and I put that in. Well, the father said, you know, we'd like to hook up the school building too, which only sounds reasonable. And I went down and at first I was told it would probably be another 50 bucks. But Will said to me, uh, well, you've got to wait a day. I got to go up and talk to them at the town hall. And so I said, okay. Well, the next day it went from 50 to 15 to 16 to the next day 32 32 thousand dollars let's stop there because okay. there, there, there's not just for the church yes. but right. there's also for the center yes. and then I understand that you wanted to build um, a house there so we're going from one an accessory dwelling so to live there which is a whole different use so from the town's perspective mr. Morris there is a rationale for it before people in TV land begin to realize that the town is just charging people uh, you know excessively that's not the reason because there are three stubs to be connected is what I understand the sewer department saying so okay I'm, and, and I'm it's a open. fair assessment yeah. that if you had three separate lots as a as a surveyor you know that each of those lots would pay separate fees that's true them. but it's it's and a subdivision. One, it's one building with an addition on the top of it. It is not three separate buildings. 
they're all on the same lot, and it was sold as being on sewer. And which so, which is why you're here before us, no, before the yeah, sewer commissioners, exactly. to take a look at that mm -hmm. issue. You have <coughs> your, your your view on it. They have theirs, which is why we're here to discuss. Okay. So I just want to make sure that. that people understand what's going on between the towns, saying we want to make sure that we get paid adequately because otherwise people complain that we're connecting people when they're not and so on and so forth. So I, I could see how that could be very irritating to go from $50 to $32,000. I think the board does. I have one question myself. Yes. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not very good in all this. But That's okay. There is a pipe coming into the property, correct? Yep. And then from the church to the building, there is a T. I don't see any other things from the town. I, that's where I am very puzzled. There is one pipe coming into the property, the property connected to the church, and from the church there is a T going to the building. Where now, what is the extra money? I'm sorry, I, I'm really not trying to be, no, uh, uh, but I'm, I just want to understand. I, I understand if it's a whole job coming from the street again to the building, but that's not the case. The whole thing is in our land. Everything in our land, no work, the town will be involved in it, not right around. Right. Right. So where now, where, why the fees? If I'm using, it's all about the money, the water I'm using, you charge me. So you charge me with the amount of water, even if I'm using yep. whatever, num whatever gallons of water. Yep. But we I'm also going to pay, my, pay my fees monthly. Uh, we also uh, charge on the sewer because we have to clean the sewer too. So you're getting, you're getting for, for both the use of the water for p getting it and then also for cleaning the sewage is, is another but cost. I'm paying for, right? That's why I'm paying this much. Uh, my, I'm paying for the sewage and I'm paying for the water based on the amount of water I'm using. Right, but the, it's, 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 it's a one for one. So if you have, take a house for example. Okay. You have a house that's sitting there with one family. You could have 10 people in the family, you could have four, you could have two, you could have a large family, 15. At least you're paying on a, on a house basis. When you have two families, you're paying based on the family, on the, on the lot usage. So conceivably you could put 10 different buildings on that and you're still paying one price for all of that. And I think the regulations, the way they're written is that, that if, and I'll ask uh, Kevin and Will, but my understanding is because there are different uses that are gonna be used there, that's where you're getting charged the additional uh, stub fee because it's not to one, it's to yeah. all the multiple. May I say one thing? Absolutely. The same people using the church, forget about the addition for now. Let's focus on the building yep. and the church. The same people using the church are the same people using the building. Same. There's mm -hmm. no there. So I don't have two uh, functions going at the same time. I understand. So basically, if people using the church, they are not using the building. If they are using the building, they are not using the church. Yep. So uh, I, I, I don't know if that if this make any difference. No, it makes sense. <laughs> I understand what but you're saying, Father. But that's basically what, we are not going like to have a surface in the church and renting the place for somebody doing, it's, do you see, uh, yep. that's, that's. It's, just, it's the same parishioners or the same congregation exactly. that's using it, whether exactly. they're inside the church exactly. or whether they're inside the, uh, I, the center. That's exactly. I understand with you. Yeah. Um, questions from anybody on the board at this point? Because then I'll probably turn to the, Will. Yeah, just, let, just to clarify, so essentially the sewer department in assessing your needs for the church rec and the accessory dwelling said that you would need to have three hookup fees, one of which has been paid by the archdiocese. When was paid? You mean the accessory dwelling mean the school? The, the, no, the new house. The, the, the new rectory. house, we didn't even discuss this yet at all because it just got approved by right, the planning. planning. All what we were asking it's for is it's just the building. Okay. So the other, the, uh, the accessory dwelling. Is a whole separate. Thing. It's a whole separate because there was, there is no building. <coughs> we just Excuse got me. the approval on Tuesday and that's why I don't see uh, like at the time we talked, I didn't see a reason for that. But however, but that I think the planning, the planning department put a condition to, no, 
on the approval to know your decision about now the access of the <laughs> So yeah, the, actually they wanted first <laughs> to, for continuation and to hear you and I said, but you, uh, you ask it to wait for the result. So they put a condition. So uh, I, I, I think they are two separate, if right. I may. But the accessory dwelling will tri trigger a a third, a third, a third, uh, okay. a third, the property. I just want to, because there's a lot yeah. of moving parts on that. But Sean? Also, I think I'm sorry. No. Thing, if we, I mean, the, that building, the school building, plus the Excellent. residential we are adding, it's considered under the code as a rectory building, which means yeah. Yeah. service for the professional for Sunday school activities, and also the rectory building by code classification is a president for the priest. So it's actually is considered by court as one unit. No. And we only ask him for no. one connection coming to it, which is already there. So to be doubling it, to say for the building down the bottom have a connection for 16,000, and the top floor has another connection for another 16,000, <laughs> it's it seems to me it's not reasonable. Sean? I'm a little bit confused. So you're asking, I grew up in that neighborhood, I went to church there, and I went to CCD there. So I okay. played basketball in the gym sure. and uh, brought and my daughter. To to that again. Well, that, that was going to be one of my questions later on. Would it be open to, you know, the public for the gymnasium and so forth? But before we, so you willing to pay for one additional again, hookup fee? I, I, or, or to the, I can refer to the that to Father, but he was saying, that, that when we bought the church, there w the church told us there is one tied, connection it was yes. through the site and already been paid for it. Actually, not more than that. They said it is a town sewage. It, the, we bought it based, it was advertised, we bought it, uh, and that's why we didn't have Title V. Nobody asked us for right. Title V it because it was actually listed as town sewage. Mm -hmm. Nobody okay. mentioned at all it. Title V. So we are in a position now, actually, I'm not going to open this. This is actually about the, well, that's, uh, the that's archdiocese. Uh, yeah, let's let's just uh, right. focus. I on just that. have some more questions about the building. Sure. All right. So, going to CCD, I don't remember there being full baths there. There were there, were, the there were boys' rooms and girls' rooms, but I don't remember them being showers and things the like that. in the basement. But they are all yeah. disconnected. Oh, there is no more yeah, shower right. or anything. Okay. They actually, in them they are very weird. They are concrete and uh, they just shower. Would so you? You're it's looking, all you, disconnected. Well. Uh, mm -hmm little common sense I mean how much water and sewer are we talking about we're probably not talking about a whole lot unless you're gonna open this up and you know and, and I had never been in the basement of the church the so I, the right so I mean you're, you're not talking about a lot of volume uh, there's no shower actually anymore they are all disconnected okay. they are, all That's the pipe got cut completely. and it's not your intentions to no. So no, no, no. The basement is just something. No, no, no. Uh, just a very, yeah. a very small portion. Very. Of the building. It's not the entire. It's not a full basement. Actually. Did you buy the property across the street? Did Which that come is? with it? No, I thought no, the not that. Actually, they sold it. That, that okay, they so sold hard. it before we we. Actually, they they sold it to us the property based on that's another. That's what I wanted to say. A uh, sixteen point something acre. And it turns no. Actually, they sold that piece of. Uh, they sold it twice. <laughs> they sold it twice, basically. That's, but uh, uh, and w we didn't. I mean, we figure out we are not going to go through any more of that. They said it's a mistake in the real estate and all that, and so okay. we just took it as it is. So it's not actually 16 points. About 14 points something. Right. So. Sorry to bring this up, but <laughs> I'm just. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I did. Maura? Yeah. <clears throat> Good evening. My question was similar to Sean's with regards to the frequency of usage of both the buildings. Be, not being familiar really with your faith and understanding how often folks would be on the property during the week is is it once a week, twice a week? You know, what is your estimation sure. of the surface for the church is actually regularly. Uh, there is a, a mass on Wednesday morning, seven to nine, and then there is a mass on Saturday. And then uh, vespers and uh, midnight praises at night, uh, six to nine. Uh, six to nine. And in the morning, uh, our our mass is two hours. So in the morning, from eight to ten. Okay. And then Sunday, it might be a long like it is. From we start at eight, we have Sunday uh, finish at eleven the mass. Then we have Sunday school, and then the kids might play there. Saturday and Sundays will be basically. Okay. 
uh, some activities there. And during the during the the school vacations, definitely. I'm expecting to have uh, to have activities there and uh, keep the kids busy during the school. Uh, uh, we have certain times uh, during the year, like the Holy Week. Mm -hmm. uh, the Holy Week, it's it's all praying. Sure. There is not basically <laughs> anybody praying. Uh, but there there are definitely some some times during the year that we have surface during the week. Okay. The week, the weekdays. Sure. So I don't know if that that's no, that an idea a or. Thank you. <laughs> Mostly the and Sunday school would be on Sunday for the classes and. For, you know. Okay, and then I, uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question for Will and uh, Kevin. May I ask now, or do you want to Hold wait? Hold on one second. Okay. I was just going to see if Tony does, and then sure. we'll we'll turn over to uh, to that. Yeah. Well, only two things that I just want to rem remind everyone: a, the sewer enterprise fund is at a deficit right now, so. Um, it's not like some of our other funds where there's a lot of funds there where we can be uh, probably more charitable. And second, um, my concern is setting a precedent by making a decision here that would then roll out to be um, used by some commercial entity some, sometime later. So you buy a piece of property, you put a dry cleaner and a McDonald's on it, and all of a sudden, you know, the same logic of one piece of property, two, two pipes, why are we paying for two hookups? Um, so that, that's, I just want to keep that, that's in the back of my mind so that we don't make a decision here that for the next many, many years we hear people going back to, well, you did it back then. Mm -hmm. So those, those are my two concerns. I really want to hear, like Maura's mentioned, Will, and I don't know the, the guidelines as well as you guys do. I want to hear your rationale for it, and then we'll apply some logic and go from there, I assume. So um, any other, otherwise the number? No, I, I too would like to hear. So can, can we just, before we go to, can we clarify that they're really looking, so one has been paid, there are, there are two more connections really that are going into the property, right? And you're looking for relief on one of those two, correct? Wait, That's what? my understanding. I just want to understand like where we are with that. So what, what, what they're looking for in essence, if I'm not mistaken, is as far as the, I call it the parish center, but the, the school center portion, um, that you want to connect it without having to pay the fee. The issue with respect to the residential accessory use is not a part of the consideration before us. It came, but it is because it of the way the planning now. board it voted. Is now. Yeah. Oh, it, it is, is now, yeah. because it, the approval for the okay. uh, uh, special permit okay. uh, was uh, under a condition that to mm -hmm. know your decision about, about okay. Uh, Okay. And, and as Mr. Youssef said, I, I, I didn't know, again, I'm not an engineer. He said it is considered to be one building one in building. the code. So, uh, and so the position is that to waive the two, in essence, connection fees is what you're as, saying. Uh, based on it is one building. Okay. All right. Thank you. I just want you to correct yeah. for clarification. Um, Will, Kevin, um, a rebuttal here or a position? So, um, can you talk to a microphone? You might need people. us to. Um, Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> no sure. can, can, can you get them or no? Probably not. <laughs> uh, we don't want to get into that Yelling. other than. Uh, okay. Sorry. Um, thank you. Um, I'll lean in when the time comes. <laughs> um, so, first of all, um, Will came up. Will was originally pro approached by father, um, went out, took a look at the site. The original intention that we thought was going on there is that that was going to stay on the septic system, the, rec um, the recreation building, when they were connecting to sewer. Then he found out they were putting a Y in in connecting up the, the other building into sewer, too. Um, when he did, he said, technically, that falls under another betterment fee because it's a it's a second building it's considered like an outbuilding if you had a two acre lot and built a second house for somebody in your family you would you would wind up paying for an additional fee just like anybody else so that was the interpretation of it um, and then there was an additional one with the interpretation of will heard recently that they were going to put a, um, a residential unit on top of that and and that's where it came up it was the interpretation of um, of our sewer rules and guidelines uh, that came up with the two betterment process, um, and as I, you know, as, as you know, you're the um, 
So, so commissioners. Can you explain so that a little bit? Like, read the guidelines, or what? What does it say? I love. Or what's your rationale? Accessory dwelling or something. Yeah. Is there? Is there? So, yeah. under uh, Article Three, Section Two of our guidelines, um, we have guidelines for residential and non-residential properties. Um, so when we looked at the rec house, there's a calculus for determining the sewer unit fee or the privilege fee for a non-residential property. Uh, so I invited Kevin Cafferty out to do a site inspection. Uh, the rules and regulations say that the minimum assessment for a non-residential property is one sewer unit. And we determined to assess them at the minimum for the rec building at one sewer unit. Uh, at that time, we had asked if there was any intention for there to be uh, a residence or anyone staying or using the facility um, at that time there was not that intention uh, meanwhile the church building which had already paid their betterment uh, completed their sewer connection it installed a Y connection point uh, for if and when they determined if they wanted to use the rec building and have that go into sewer uh, whether or not their septic system failed down the line or something like that uh, we were then approached about the accessory dwelling property, uh, which we consider to be a residential use of the property. Um, and again, uh, Section 3 uh, of our rules and regulations specifies that a dual use property uh, shall cons uh, consist of no less than two sewer units. Um, and each sewer unit is a complete uh, privilege fee uh, with the current rate being $16,000. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. <laughs> Pardon, I'm sorry. I have never known that I need two permits to the two, never. When I talked to Mr. Morris, I was under the impression that two things will be in. So I never said we will use that. When he came back and he told me you have to pay the $16,000, I said it's better to leave it on the septic tank. Mm -hmm. I had no clue, not whatsoever. I don't know where it came that I was going to leave it. Uh, absolutely not. I had no clue, not whatsoever, that it's two separate things. It's one thing connected together. Until he came and told me I have bad news. We have to pay $16,000 to connect to the building. I said, why is that? Because it is too, I said, it's better to leave it on septic then. And <laughs> that's all what I said, but I had no, I didn't know anything about this, period. Okay. Did, so, you, did you have a question you want to ask? So Will? Um, I have a question. Hold on. <laughs> I guess I, my question was, are there, you know, we have other, um, are there any other situations in town where we have this, where we've got like two completely separate structures coming into one pipe, and how do we assess that? Um, there are a number of residential properties, um, anywhere between four to a dozen, uh, that share a connection like this. Uh, due to difficulties in construction at their particular lots. Uh, the residents decided to sign an agreement to share their lateral and put a Y in. Uh, as far as non-residential mixed use, um, I don't really have any examples other than the dance studio and the river shed. Uh, they technically share a line. Uh, however, I think the line they share is an eight inch line under their driveway and uh, not the typical uh, six inch line that you would find on, on a lot. So if, if I can clarify that, that's, that's because that's the same building. They yep. share the building. Um, and the residential examples that, that he was using, some of them, um, there might be an accessory dwelling out back that's part of the project. And just by the rules and regulations, I believe the way it goes is then they're charged a half mm. betterment fee that they pay for that. When they put an accessory. Tied. The accessory okay. dwelling, they call, I believe they call it a carriage house. Okay, thank you. And to the point to the point of the restaurant and the dance studio, financially, that they, they each paid, at least uh, as I recall, didn't they? They didn't pay. Before our time, I don't, I, remember, I, I don't I, remember. what it was. There was some discussion on that. They they didn't pay just mm -hmm. one hookup fee. I think they paid at least twice, and they were commercial, so which is fair. Yeah. But um, Jeff, the one bedroom apartment. Two bedroom apartment up above. You'd have three. Three. three bedroom. Three bedroom. Yeah. What 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 do you call an accessory dwelling? One, two, or three bedroom? It's, uh, it's a percentage. Our our guidelines are relatively loose for the definition of an accessory dwelling, uh, but typically anything with a full bathroom uh, would constitute uh, being considered an accessory dwelling for our division. That's that's how we've been making those determinations. 
Um, in, in this case, uh, we defaulted to the dual use property uh, rules and regulations because it was combining a residential use with a non-residential use for the property. Uh, it says uh, no less than two units for a property like that. Anybody else? But he just said that it's it's being considered as a one-use building, the, the way it's permitted. And I guess one question I had is, what would they have done back in, whenever this was, when the church first had, when the church was first built and the stub came in, if, was the plan then to tie both buildings in to that, to that stub? Would they have been charged for two separate things? Well, we can't speculate because Church, was there a lot why they didn't. Why happening. they didn't? May I? I'm sorry. I, I'm very. Hold bad. on, Father. Hold I, on. I apologize. <laughs> I'm very bad. I'm very bad. I'm sorry. I apologize. I think you know. Um, uh, I really have a question. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I apologize. Go right ahead, because I got to. Why they didn't build it them twice? The two, the two things. Did the, the, I, do they have any evidence showing that the archdiocese refused to pay for the school and paid only to the church? There, if they do have this, I, I, will, I will, but why they build them only for one? It, may I? I was going to say... If there's no water, uh, yep. may, I, may I clarify something? Let, let, there, the building no, has Hold on, hold, let's get, let's get the first question. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we believe the reason why this building was can never connected to town property and the reason why it was never assessed a betterment uh, in the first place uh, during the Musquashkit phase project, which is the phase in which sewer went in this area, uh, was that this building is located so far away from the gravity sewer main on Hood Road uh, that there'd be no way to achieve the minimum pipe depth and slope to reach it with a conventional gravity line. Uh, with today's technology, they can use a progressive cavity grinder pump or E1 pump. Uh, this pump will be provided by the town as part of their privilege fees for this property. Uh, and that pump allows them to move uh, the, the waste into the sewer system, uh, even though it's set so far back. Was that already put in for the first line? Uh, the, the church building, the church proper, was close enough uh, to the street in order to, to have gravity service. Oh, so there's one stop. There's, yep. There was only one stop, stop in the other thing that was going on, because that was in, in the time when that church was closed. Uh, sold. It was talk of subdivisions going in right. there and a street going in there and multiple houses. <coughs> so at the time, um, that building, we thought at that time, was coming down. Anybody else? Um, I just have one last question. You know, why wouldn't you want to keep the back building on septic if it's already there? Oh, it will actually, it will cost, I think, a lot of money because it we never tested, we don't know. Because again, we were under the impression it is uh, town storage. So we, we, I don't know if you bring it up to the code. I have, I have no clue. Uh, maybe yeah, well, it's, it's in groundwater now. Mm -hmm. So if it's in groundwater, it would fail. And to put in a compliance system would be expensive Equally and it would kind of deform the looks of the property. Yep. Could. And certainly between the two places. I, I'm, I want to apologize. I was just no, kind no, of no, no, Father. I, don't I really no, 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 no. I, I feel also sometimes, very important you know, discussion. I used to teach, and when I, I, I used to be a teacher, and that's how I, when I get excited about something, so I apologize for no, that. No need to apologize. <laughs> just, just to give you a little history, Father. The yes. Right, couple doors down, there's a, there's a side street, and the people that have lived in those homes for fifty years, Fieldstone, Long, Long Meadow. The soils are very bad, like they are, you know, in, in, on your property. Those people would love to get tied in. There was a person in that neighborhood that would, was willing to try to work with the town to try to get them tied in. So, to have, you know, you know, someone come in and ask for a privilege, you know, have fees waived, you know, that this is a tough thing we have to balance out. We have to say no to those people. You know, there's not capacity, or it's not going to, just not going to happen. And here we are making exceptions, you know, to, and I understand where you're coming from. You thought it was tied in. And I could say to some of those neighbors, when Karen first told me what was going on about the project, I, I didn't even realize it. I don't live in that neighborhood right now, but some of those neighbors could have been looking at what Kevin and Will just said, you know, maybe six homes or something like that, and who knows, or, or a, a lot of apartments. So this is almost a, 
a win-win situation for the neighborhood. It's still going to be a, a church and, you know, remain quiet and, you know, the way it has been for a long time. Probably a lot better than what it could have been. So it's, it's, a, it's kind of a toss-up. It's... If I may say again, you're talking, we are a non-profit organization protected by, by the law. And we're not making any money of it. <laughs> right. Right. So right. we are different than building houses or right. whatever that right. making money. But that's, right. the church is service right. for the community and the people. That so, so my take on it is this. Um, personally, since a stub wasn't put in, I really don't think we should be charging for the additional use of the parish center because regardless of whether it was gravity or not, when we were going through it, we were looking at lots that potentially could come online. Um, so I, I don't I agree with the parish center not having to pay an additional fee. Can you the explain only, that again? Sure. Why? When when they went and they designed um, the um, sewers for the Musquashka Pond area, I think that's when it was put in, wasn't it? Or was it put in during the hills? I forgot when. Okay. They only gave them one stub for the church and the parish center. Um, and my feeling on that is, is that's what was deemed at the time. And I would agree that, you know, there's no need now to turn around and say, well, now that they can actually push sewage, now we're going to charge. And my feeling is um, they didn't do it at the time. I, I would agree that, you know, they were assessed. One, it was paid by the church, not by this church, but by the predecessor. Um, but I do have a problem with the accessory, and I'll tell you why. Because the church, uh, the predecessor, had a rectory. That rectory got charged for a stub, and that rectory was for habitation. So I'm kind of stuck right now saying that you cer certainly shouldn't be paying the 32, but I am stuck with the 16, the additional 16, because you're going to be living there. Um, and so I'm looking at it saying, um, because there's an added use now that's going on there, I'm, I'm not inclined to say waive the entire 32,000. Um, but that's how I'm looking at it. I will agree that, you know, I can certainly make an exception, or not exception, I can certainly suggest that there is a difference between a commercial, a residential. This is a, um, um, it is a church. It falls under a different category of a charity that I think is something that's unique. And certainly this board, as commissioners, can certainly uh, carve out and say this is the exception to what would be a commercial or you know further residential um, so that's how I'm looking at it just one question for you John so what what makes you think that they were only counted as one I mean they weren't open they had no money they didn't want to invest any more money in it they probably just ran one up here because they knew it was going to increase the value of the property at some point in time but it doesn't, I don't know why you would think that they only count. Because the buildings one. were there. And so when we, when we go down, like I know that there was a lot down on Third Cliff that was, um, hadn't been built on, but we knew that it could be. They put okay. a stub there and they basically said, you got, you're going to pay the betterment, regardless of whether a house goes up or not. And actually the house ultimately did go up. So well, they what if they were going to put there. two houses there? Um, then they would have to probably have come back and asked. So, but they didn't, you didn't say to them up front, well, that's two. So you're going to pay two betterments. I mean, they only took one because that's all anyone would ever do if they were going to build one house or 20 houses. No, I think the reason was the one that I'm talking in particular was, um, I'll get the street clear. It, they could only build one house. Right? Before May. When, when Weston and Samson would lay, laid out the lines, if they came across a buildable lot, they put a stub there. I don't right. believe the owner paid a betterment until he wanted to build on it, okay? The stub's there for future build-out. But a stub for one, That's not a right. stub for That's five right. or ten, That's if right. you could have right. built ten on it. Right, they should, maybe you would have thought that in that yeah. case, ten, ten stubs. Right, which you'd never do. And, just and the only reason why I'm saying is they knew the existence of the Paris Center and they didn't put two. If they put two, then I'd be saying, well, then they knew that there are going to be two different uses there. That's all. Now, granted, I know Will's saying that septic existed and there was this idea of gravity, but my feeling is, you know, so that's how I'm looking at it. Anyone else? I don't have anything else to I, I agree with you, John. I think well, for the same assessment. So I would, there's no way we can not charge one more for the residents. You know, I think that it's really whether we want to give the third one for free 
which opposes the, the guidelines that Will just mentioned. So I think it's, um, you know, I, I think it's something we have to figure out whether this is something that we can afford to do and we want to set the president for doing it, precedence, excuse me, for doing it in the future because there will be another situation that is going to refer to this that says, you know, you did it for them, do it for us. And that's, that's my biggest concern. I'm not, I understand you're a nonprofit. I, no. I get it. Um, and no, 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 but, but I, I no, want Let me just finish oh, and then, <laughs> um, you know, and I, I'm not looking to stick, I mean, if there was anything that seemed like it was, it, there doesn't seem any reason except the fact that you bought a piece of property that you thought had more hookups or hooked up the whole property as opposed to one building on it, and that's not the case, that we're, it's not like we're misreading something or the logic doesn't make sense or anything like that. I mean, that is what anybody else on that property would have to pay if they were doing it the same thing as you were doing on the property. So I, I feel bad that you bought a piece of property that one, had one hookup and you thought it was for the whole property no matter what you did on it, but I don't think that I'm having most of the situations when we come up to this, there's like some logic to it where it's like, okay, but this doesn't make sense type stuff. This, I don't see the piece of this where it just doesn't make sense. I understand that it's a charitable organization, a church, I'd love to give you money, I'd love to give everybody whatever we could, but I just am having a problem with that. And no, that's, I, I, again, I, I have just one comment about what sure. you said. If there's no buildings at all and they build it in, you have all the right to, to charge them. I don't see really, I, I, I see it as very reasonable to charge you for the apartment, to be very honest with you, except to what Mr. <laughs> Youssef said, it is one building. Uh, they consider it in the code as one building. But it's still, it's a new building, it's, it's a new apartment coming. So I have, logically, I can lo see it, it is very reasonable. Mm -hmm. But the building itself, this existed, and they never charge anything. It's a big different than the example you gave. There is one, there is a piece of land uh, open, nothing on it. They build it in and you have only one. So you charge them for that. Well, Do you see what, what I, I hear what you're saying, but if they had ever gone to hook it up, they would have been charged two. Yeah. If they ever went and actually did hook up the two buildings, Will would have said, you've got to pay two because it's two. Uh, the, uh, my, his rationale, according to what I heard, it could be, uh, it, it could be uh, looked at it in a different way. In the future, this is an existing building that could be connected to the sewage. So oh, I don't uh, think, uh, I think uh, we're making I, I see what you're yeah, saying. I, 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 understood, I understood now yeah, what you're saying. I, I understood what you're saying. Yeah, I understood. So I, I just, I, I, I understood. I, I understood. I'm sorry. I missed it. <laughs> I understood. So how do we want to do? I, I hate to say it because we got a really Can aggressive again, agenda, I'm, and I'm I don't mean to give you less time. It's just no, I think no, no, we've no, no. we've kind of covered sorry, everything I'm, I'm full circle. No. You understand the concern that we have as a town, have as a board, having to make sure Absolutely. certain things. That's what we're looking at. Um, well, someone make a motion, and let's. I will. Um, I move to waive the sewer privilege fee for of sixteen thousand dollars for one connection of two proposed at twenty seven thirty one Hood Road. Is that so, confusing? No. Nope. So yes. they'll pay for one and they'll have because you already paid. Did you already? Yeah, um, one's already done and paid for two more. Yeah, yeah no, you pay for the new one. The new accessory dwelling on top of yes. the gymnasium. So instead of not 32. But 16. 16. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, motion by Ms. Canfield, seconded by Mr. Harris. Any further discussion? No, I forgot to ask, did anybody motion. have any questions from the audience aside from our members here? Anybody? Okay. Um, yes, you have a question? No? No. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Sean seconded. Sean seconded. A second. All those um, against signify by saying nay. 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 Four to one. Um, we will um, Fair waive enough. Thank you. one of the uh, two fees. Okay, Thank gentlemen. Thank you very much. And again, I'm sorry if I. Father, you were fine. <laughs> no, I wish I had more people in front of us like that. Believe me. Thank, thank you very, very thank much. You. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much because you did a great work on this. Okay. Um, Let's do uh, the next one, which happens to be the uh, generator installation. We're going to postpone that because uh, there was an um, emergency with one of the uh, 
individuals, Kevin Kelly, so he's not here. So we're going to move on to the uh, 710 discussion vote approval of the collective bargaining memorandum for agreements for the AMP, Tosca, Police and Fire. AMP is the administrative, managerial, and um, professional union. Tosca is, now that one I forgot. Town of Situate Clerical Association. Town of Situate Clerical Association. I just want to make sure everybody understands what these are. So you're dealing with the unions here in town, uh, both from the um, people you meet as well as the ones who are in the department heads. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. So this has been a long project. Yes. <laughs> So um, we've, um, we've come to an agreement with all f well, four of our five, five unions. Um, the one union, um, the Labor's Union, we already had an existing contract. So um, this would be for fiscal year um, FY18 through FY20. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the first time. That's what you get. <laughs> That's okay. He was still outside. Outside. Yeah, I, you're doing better without him. I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we get all, all four contracts, um, same standard cost of living increases, 1.5 for uh, FY18, 2% for FY19, and 2% for FY20. Um, some. Um, and that's consistent with the laborers too, right? Yes. Good. Right. Yeah. Correct. In schools. And how does that, we don't know how that factors with the schools, do we? It's also consistent with sort of what the standards we're seeing in the surrounding towns as well. It's pretty, the 2% generally is, Good. is what we're seeing. So. Um, so Sorry again, I interrupted you. Go ahead. Okay. So um, a few additional longevity steps, I think, with each of the contracts. Um, obviously, they, the, some of the specifics differ from, from contract to contract, but that's the other sort of, um, sort of consistent um, uh, uh, theme that, that I think you'll see in those, uh, the, those MLAs. Um, a few other things, um, granting uh, three days sick time for, um, for a member who is uh, using it to, uh, uh, using time to care for a family member. Um, so typically, it wouldn't be allowed to use sick time unless, kid, unless they're, they're sick themselves. So we've sort of extended that, um, that benefit to, to, to care for a family member as well. Yeah, so about three additional sick days, three of their common lives that they use for family Okay, good. Right. You might want to just move that over to the set of the for the two of you. There you go. Go ahead. Right there. Fine. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Do you want me to go through? Yeah, just so kind of like some of the the, the the differences. That's all, so the people right. understand. Um, so um, one of the things that we, we previously we had communication specialist dispatches were separated into two different unions, um, the fire and Tosca. Um, with these contracts, we've actually um, integrated the, the the communication specialists all under the Tosca contract. So they're out of the fire contract at this point um, and into Tosca. Um, we actually um, chose to regrade the communication specialists, so they've actually been bumped up a grade. We did some comps and determined that um, they were they were a little they were, they were lacking to some degree. Um, so uh, so we're able to do that for them. Um, and that's a problem because we could lose them to other areas that we'd be paying higher, and so we're trying to retain absolutely right the quality. Retention yep. has been a problem, right? Yeah, we've had some turnover in that in that position, so oh, really? um, yeah. Okay. Um, a few other general changes. Um, we've we've looked at um, um, changing the sick leave bank again. Some of these these are. Um, the, the system that we have, it, it differs from, from contract to contract, but with Tosca, for instance, um, we, we, there was a system in which people could donate one day per year to the sick leave bank. It was somewhat problematic to kind of keep track of that because, I mean, you literally, it's going back. 20 years that we've been doing this. Um, how many days are in the bank? How, you know, who's contributed? Who's in? Who's out? Um, that's been somewhat difficult to sort of um, to monitor. So, what we've done is we've actually um, created a voluntary uh, sick leave bank. So, if someone reaches a point where they've exhausted their sick time, they they need additional time. 
uh, other members of the union can uh, can actually donate that time to them. So um, we, we've gotten away from this this the need to sort of uh, to, to track that time and to and to and then only people who are eligible who who actually contributed time would be then be eligible. So this actually sort of broadens the people who are who are eligible for it. So um, that's a change we made with both both Tosca and with with our amps. Um, I think with um, so I pretty much covered most of the changes to Tosca with amps. Um, there was a number of positions that we actually added to the bargaining unit. Um, we added positions like communication specialist manager. Um, we have the new assistant water superintendent, uh, assistant board of health director. So these are all new positions that we've added to the uh, um, uh, to that bargaining unit. Um, there were the also a couple of positions that weren't actually on our scale. So we have an assistant recreation director. The recreation director was scaled in one union. The clerical staff was in another union, and the assistant recreation director was not mentioned in either contract. Right. Mm. But obviously, if they're both in the union, he's supposed to be union, so we had to find a place for a home for that position, too. Mm. There's a couple of those uh, out there floating around that we had to find a home for. Okay. We, um, there was a... A request from the union, the bargaining team, to reclassify a number of the positions in AMPS. Um, we we did some comps on, on on some of those requests. Some made sense, some didn't. So there was a few positions that we ended up sort of um, reclassifying, like the uh, the rec director and the um, um, harbor master, for instance. So it's a few positions that that were, were reclassified. Harbor actually, master actually wasn't reclassified. He was being paid at a different grade than what he's actually classified at. So all we did was make his title match the grade he was in. Okay. So he was hired for a grade higher than what the contract called for. So all we did was make it match. Right. Uh, so are the re reclassifications are essentially a raise to all those people? Correct. Yeah. Right. So there's seven of them, I see? Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven, right. And the AMP one. Right. right. Yeah, uh, well, the assistant water superintendent is new. So that's not a reclassification. That's a classification that, that didn't exist before. Just making sure that's um, right. Okay. You know, like I talked to a couple of board members. They'd asked for the uh, status of the hiring the health director. Uh, the first go around, we had very few applicants, and the applicants we had were not ones that met the full requirements for the job description. So we went back out. We did a salary survey and realized that we were significantly underpaying what we were looking for. So that had to be reclassified. We've reclassified. We've gone back out. Uh, I think at this point we're seeing a, a much better quality of applicant coming in for that position. It's a position we got to get filled in a hurry. Right. Okay. So Bob, uh, Bob really did a lot of work on looking at comps, establishing comps, and going across. You know, it wasn't one or two towns; it was ten to twelve that he was going and finding comps for all these positions. And we try to stay in the general geographic area. Right. Uh, you know, if someone wants to go work at Linfield in the North Shore and do that commute, that's up to them. They can go ahead. Um, we're competing with the towns down here, and we want to make sure that we're competitive. So not only do we attract people, but once we attract them, we keep them. Mm -hmm. and, and with all of these comps, have we brought everybody up to level or just closer to an average? Where would you, what, what was your estimation? I would say that, that they're at the correct level at this point okay. for the comps that we had done. Yeah, for the new classifications we had done. And then there's a, a step increase as well, right? We, was that in the AMP you added a step? So yeah, in, in AMPS there was a um, an additional step after 20 years of employment, um, but that also uh, we did the same thing with in Tosca. So um, in, in Tosca there was a uh, an increase at, at a 10. 20 year step. Oh, I thought I read a 10 year one. Police and fire with 10. Okay. Yeah, police and fire with police 10. And, with 10. Right. So we've had a, a step in every contract. Correct. And we've reclassified positions in right. every contract. I wouldn't say I don't. I don't know that we reclassified a position. Oh, I guess we did in Tosca with uh, the communications specialist. Right. <clears throat> we found on these salary surveys that we were not only below average but on the low end right. of below average, uh, significantly in some cases, two, three, four dollars an hour. We were paying less. Communication specialist was really glaring when you looked at what they're paying over in Hingham for the uh, combined dispatch. It's the exact same job. Uh, the pay was significantly higher. So these people, you know, it's, it's not a job I'd want to do. It's hard work. It's tense work. Uh, it can be very stressful. And, you know, if you get a chance to make $4 an hour doing the same thing 10 minutes down the road, you're going to go. 
Uh, and if we don't have people who are qualified that can do that job, then the police and fire aren't going to be able to go and do their jobs, and it becomes very problematic. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was, you know, again, Bob did a, a good job on the count on the comps, but it was that was one that really jumped out at us, going, "Wow, that's just significantly less than what we need to pay to keep people." Okay. So um, with um, with fire, um, again, the, the same uh, call is 1.5, 2 and 2. Um, 10 year step for firefighters and a, a five and a 10 year steps for, um, for, for the officers, for the lieutenant and captains. Um, we made some change to the, to the ambulance recall language where um, we were having some difficulty getting firefighters to return in the event we actually, um, we were short staffed and we, we wanted to man the additional ambulance. So, um, so we changed that, that language so that if they did come back, even if they, they, they worked for a short period of time, they would be guaranteed four hours pay. Um, we, we, we put a, sort of the caveat in, the, in the, uh, the MOA that we would actually do an evaluation for a year to see whether or not that really changed our callback um, percentages. Um, and if it doesn't, then we're actually going to revert back to our, our current practices, which we just pay for three hours. So if they call, call, back. Back, call back for one particular type of duty, it was a four hour minimum. If they got called back for the ambulance, it was a three hour minimum. And you know, why would you come back to the three hours on one when you come back for the four hours on the other? So we agreed to look at it, see what it was going to cost us. Uh, it does have sunset language, so if we, uh, at our discretion, decide that it's too expensive or it's not working, it reverts back to the original language. But uh, we want to take a look and see what, see what that happened. And just to jump one step ahead of Bob, the other thing we had to do in the firefighters contract is we increased what we paid to the paramedics. Um, Chief Murphy's been in a couple times. Uh, the list comes out. There's five paramedics on it. They're interviewing and. Situate, Norwell, Hingham, Marshfield, Cohasset, Duxbury, Pembroke. Um, they're interviewing every single town around here. Uh, and it's just a skill set that there's not enough people right now. So in order to attract those people and keep those people, uh, again, we did the comps. And, and uh, you know, those guys are, you can't put a price on what they can do if they show up in your house and you need them. So right. Right. it's important that we get them, that we train them, and that we keep them. Uh, we did actually just get a uh, fully trained firefighter from another town who actually was in a non-civil service department and took the civil service exam to come to Situate. Uh, and, and we snapped him up. Uh, we knew he was interviewed in a couple places. We interviewed him and made him an offer before he left the building. Uh, we knew how important it was. John, quick question. When, when we pay a four-hour minimum, th they work the four hours, right? They, they just, they know that they're going to be here for four hours instead of three, or how does that work? It, generally they are, but it's not. If they get cut loose at three and a half hours, they get four hours. If they get cut loose at three hours, it's three hours. But they get a four-hour minimum to come in. So are they coming in for, like, an accident that's going to last four hours, or, or how does that work kind they're, of? They're getting called back because the ambulance are gone or the other trucks are gone, and we need someone to staff the second ambulance right. while everybody else is out of town. Right. So generally, if everybody's gone to the hospital, that's going to be four hours. By the time they get there, drop off, do all their paperwork, clear, and come back. So they're there. Otherwise, guys just don't come back. They're not going to come back if they're going to come in for an hour. By the time they get up, get out, get dressed, get in, it's, you know, I don't mean to say it this way, but it's really not worth their time to come in for that. And, and no, no. To Tony's point, they're not coming in for half an hour to get paid for four. Generally, no. No. Not for, for the callback, that means the guys are going to be out of town for a significant period of time, and that's why they call guys right. back. If they're just running someplace and coming back and they can get back, um, they wouldn't do a call back. But if they can be tied up in South Shore, then they would call guys back to man the second ambulance. Uh, these, uh, um, salaries and positions are incorporated in the fiscal 20 budget? Yes. There may, there may be some adjustments, but based on where we thought we were with the contracts, we made estimates going this so. As I said, we might have to make some adjustments. Good. So they're all retroactive to cover FY 18, 19, and 20. Right, and different yeah. things uh, go into effect at different times. Right. You know, like the, the step increases, <coughs> we made those post retroactive so we wouldn't be stuck with big uh, retroactive payments. Okay. So a lot of those are coming up that they get those in the next fiscal year uh, as opposed to going backwards. So. We try to recognize that uh, we needed to get them to a point where we were competitive, while at the same time, the town wasn't going to just write a giant check to pay back wages for a lot of this stuff. 
So typically when we go over these, we get a, a sheet that says what the, the complete financial impact of the contract is. You know, it adds in the $200 for this and the 2% for this and the one step. Is that? Okay, first time, Tony, I can get right. you that if you want. Yeah. First time. I don't know if that, anyone else. Yep. It was kind of right. helpful for right. us just to look and. What are the ramifications? But you're right. I, we didn't mention that until, until right now. <laughs> but um, you want to do the police and then. Yep. So um, police again, similar, same one and a half, two and two. Um, some. Um, um, you know, a, a few minor changes on you know the the, the what we pay out for our, our police details or what what actually is the going rate for police details. A few changes to the clothing and, and um, clothing allowance, um, longevity, shift differential, officer in charge um, changes. Um, in uh, in addition to also um, what we pay out for fitness and, and wellness standards. Um, some of the other changes, again, just like, again, minor, m relatively minor changes to the grievance procedures. Um, you know, the fitness standard is, uh, there is a fitness standard in the contract. Um, I think that's really important that people are fit. That's not on the 111F, the injured on duty. So what we did is we made it twice a year to make sure they're staying fit. So they're not just training for a month because they can pass this. Uh, so if they pass it twice, um, they get paid both times they pass it. And then I think there's a provision in there that if more than half the department passes it, right. then everybody who passes it gets another. Yeah, that was uh, nice. Good incentive. Yeah. So 60%, yeah. So we're encouraging not only, you know, Bob to stay fit, but Bob's going to get on me to stay fit because he wants to get the extra bonus at right. the end. So um, I think that's real important. And, and I was glad that they... They went along with that. Right. Uh, we also put in some uh, changes in both contracts on um, how we do 111F, which is police fire injured on duty. They don't get workers' compensation. It's <coughs> under Mass General Law, Chapter 41, Section 111F. So we put some language in to change how that's reported, how they have to track it, what they have to do uh, on that, and also some changes on our sick leave, how they can account for it, what they can do, and what the penalties are if, they're, if we think that they're abusing sick leave. We thought those were important going in. Uh, and, and we held out to make sure we got the language that we were looking for, at least as close as we could, uh, so we could deal with those issues if and when they come up. Uh, you know, I, I like to tell the guys, 99% of the contract makes no difference to me, makes no difference to you. A contract uh, protects good employees from bad management and management from bad employees. But for most of us, it just determines what you're getting paid. But we need to address, you know, those outlying areas so that we're protected, the union is protected. Uh, and I think we were able to accomplish a lot of that in these contracts. Good. All right. One other thing, well, two other things if I could. Um, the, the negotiations were good. Uh, sometimes they get heated. Uh, sometimes we all get angry. Um, but uh, I think the unions all worked with us to get these done. Uh, I think we all bargained in good faith. And I think in the end, uh, we're all a little bit happy and a little bit angry. Um, you know, we think we got some stuff and we think we didn't get what we wanted. So I think everybody kind of walks out saying, ah, which is, which is good, but it was good working with the unions. Uh, I'm glad we got them all done. I know that hasn't been the history in here that we've gotten all the contracts done. So uh, we avoided any arbitration, any mediation. It was all done. Uh, and I'd also like to give Bob a lot of credit. Uh, he did a lot of the, the back door work on this. Uh, and also when I had conflicts, Bob would go in and do the, you know, we'd talk and he'd go in and he'd just take care of the whole thing. Uh, without me, sometimes it was just Bob by himself uh, with three or four other, five other people uh, sitting across the table with them. So, uh, you know, Bob really uh, did a lot of work on these and deserves a lot of credit. Um, and if they blow up, it's Bob's fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, any other questions from the board? I'm yeah, I just want to say thank you. Um, you know, great job. And thanks for getting through all this, you know, coming in here your first year and getting this done. Um, it was a big task. So we appreciate it. For both of you, I think you did a lot of work to try to bring our folks up to a commensurate level with the you know competitive towns, so we can right. keep the good guys that we have and attract you know just as good guys to come back in and women, men and women. Yeah. We spent a lot say. of money on police officers and firefighters and dispatchers, training them and, and yes. bringing them up to uh, a level of proficiency where they're valuable than to just let them go someplace else. Right. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. sense. And as I think Chief Murphy's hopped on a couple of times, we have 
several vacancies right now in the fire department. We're anticipating some more. So far, salaries for paramedics, there aren't that many of them. Uh, and when that list comes out, every time we come in, where else are you interviewing? I do hang out at Pembroke and, and, and there's a whole list of places that they're going to interview. So, uh, and do we lose many or at the losing end when they say that? We have it at this point, Sean. Um, we went back and looked. We haven't lost them, but we're starting to see in the overall marketplace, for lack of a better term, a lot more mobility for people looking to go. Uh, so if, if you're in a civil service department and you go from one department to another, you lose your civil service seniority, after three years you get it back. You never get your departmental seniority, but you get your civil service seniority back. So uh, prior to that, you know, guys really didn't want to move, but you're really seeing uh, people move and it's, it's salary and it's benefits. And it's a generation, isn't it, too? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the workforce, the younger workforce today is not like our parents were. Uh, it's not, you know, you go to work and that's where you're going to work for the rest of your life. Um, you know, these, these men and women are in, they're out, they, they move around, they relocate. Um, so they're a lot more mobile, I think, than the previous generations. And they're willing to, you know, if the job looks better all the way up there, they're willing to just pack up and, and go all the way up there and, and go work up there. So you have to be... Uh, <laughs> You have to be competitive to keep those people. And again, we spend a lot of time and money on them. They do a great job. They're vital to what they do. So we're going to make sure we hang on them. You too. And I just would like to, if I could, John, just yeah. you know, elaborate a little bit on Mar, what Mar had said. And it's usually at the, uh, when we're given the awards, the 5, 10, 15 year awards for the longevity and so forth, that we recognize them. But that's this is what makes up our town. So the job you're doing is, is this, this is our town. We, we come and we go. But the employees, you know, really what the residents see on a day-to-day -day basis, whether police, fire, DPW, I don't care who it is. And we've all, at times, you know, publicly thanked them. And they, you know, they really do a good job. They do. And the people that were sitting across from the table us, they work hard. Right. They right. do a good job. They care. Um, you know, the only ones I haven't sat down with to negotiate with the, uh, the laborers union that was done before I got here. Uh, but, you know, um, it's really just trying to be fair. You know, to, we're, we're trying to pay them a fair wage. They're trying to make a fair wage, and uh, you know, I can't break them. They can't break them. Then, then it doesn't work. So everybody has to kind of give a little, get a little, and, and try to make sure that we come to a number that we can all agree on. Great. Thanks. Just want to say thank you. It's the first time in probably um, eight years. All five were done. Um, probably I mean, it's nine years, so it's nice to know that um, yeah, we'll they were done. We'll be starting in at about six. Yeah, I know. <laughs> six <laughs> months. Uh, hey, don't go to sleep <laughs> too <a> quickly. <laughs> All right, good. Um, we don't need a motion. A motion, please. Do we need a motion on this? Motion right? to approve the please. collective bargaining memorandum of agreement for <coughs> AMP. Can I just make it all one motion? Yep. All right. Uh, motion to approve the collective bargaining memorandum of agreement for AMP, for TOSCA, for the police and for fire. Motion by Second. Ms. Curran. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Bob, thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Bob. Thank you. Bob. So, moving on to the next agenda item. It's supposed to be at 7.20 and seeing that it's like two minutes to eight, what I'd like to do now is just say let's take a break and then we're going to go straight to um, the award the bond anticipation note and then we're going to hit the budget for the treasurer right away so you can leave, Pam, um, and we'll take care of that. So right now let's take a five, ten minute break? Ten minute break? Seven. Seven. <laughs> She'll be back in seven, we'll be back in ten. Um, all right, so let's start with all this. In bond anticipation note, treasurer, the town, Pam Apatavli. How are you, Pam? I'm well. How Thank you for you? waiting with us and Everyone. going through this. Mm. Thank so, you what for are we anticipating on the bond and we have the good a news? Bond and a ban. Good. Two, because Situate doesn't do just one thing. We <laughs> do two. So. Um, the town received competitive bids for from bond and note underwriters on Thursday, January 17th, for a seven million six hundred and eighty-five thousand dollar twenty-year general obligation bond issue, and a eight million five hundred ninety-six thousand three hundred and twelve day bond anticipating anticipation note issue. 
Raymond and James Associates, Inc. was the winning bidder on the bonds with an average interest rate of 2.62%. Jeffries, Jeffries LLC was the winning bidder on the note with a net interest cost of 1.78%. The town received a total of five bids on the bonds and six, six bids on the notes. Um, I can see John making a funny face, probably because my note it on my amount on the bond is different than in the press million. release. Yeah. And that's because we received $724,000 in premium that we put towards the projects, Good. which reduced the cost of the bond. Good. Um, I've listed the various projects financed on the memos I've, I've given you. Um, as I said, the paramount of the bonds have been reduced by the premium received uh, and um, less than net cost of issuance cost. We also took that into consideration. Uh, prior to the sale, we met with Standard & Poor's Global Rating, which is a municipal bond credit rating agency. They affirmed the town's AA plus rating and assigned the SP negative one plus rating to the notes, which is the highest short term rate attainable. The rating agency cited the town's very strong economy, strong management with good <coughs> financial policies and practices, strong budgetary performance, strong budgetary flexibility, and a very strong liquidity as positive credit factors. So we did very well, I think, uh, with Hilltop Securities and uh, myself, Nancy, and Jim, with Standard & Poor's, was very impressed with how everything went and how fast we did it. Um, I, I think the competitive bids of having five and six are uh, huge. That's showing that situate bonds are, uh, you know, very well taken in the marketplace. Um, all of the bids were very close, uh, which is, again, really good. The coupon rate for the bond was 5%, but with the premium and everything we got, uh, the net interest cost is 2.62%. And uh, the same with the band, the coupon rate was 3%, and we got it down to 1.78%. So I think that... Uh, it was better than Nancy and I had um, thought it was going to be. Um, I'm really pleased by it. Uh, I think she is too, and I think Jim is too. Good job. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Questions from the board? Just one note that the S&P report was great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it said just stellar things about our whole financial department, so it was awesome, mm -hmm. except for the one thing, the one thing we could do better. The OPEB thing was the only thing that they said, and we're all, all aware of that. So, um, and just another thing to bring into it, awesome. it they're looking at uh, you know um, our foreshore, uh, what we do to protect <coughs> ourselves against the storms. Yeah. We really hadn't Nancy and myself being here for the five six years, and borrowing had never really heard that come up before. It seems like a new issue that Standard and Poor's is asking. Um, but, you know, we protect ourselves with our stabilization funds and, you know, all of the things we do for our storms um, to budget for that. And I think they were impressed with how we do all that. Good. That's interesting. Maura? Um I agree. There's a lot of great commentary on Standard Poor's, especially as we move forward, looking at a lot of upcoming projects in the next coming years. Mm -hmm. Can we get this S&P rating up on our website? I think it would be really beneficial for folks to read at mm -hmm. the great financial management and planning that, you know, all of you and your staffs do uh, to keep us liquid like this um, mm -hmm. and to continue to get these great ratings. So thank you, mm -hmm. all of you, because um, we, we know there's a lot more coming before us, so this is great news. Thank you. Welcome. I have a, um, I'm privileged to work with a great team. Yeah. No, they are too, working with you. All It goes both, both ways. So. Yeah, we have a good team. Well, good. All right, then. I think we need a motion, or do we? Well, Karen has to, to review, read the vote. discuss, and vote, right? I get to read all of this. Mm -hmm. Is this for both? Yes. Okay. It's, yes, it's combined. We could just read it once with Karen making the motion and then have it seconded or whatever. 
So you don't have to read it twice. So read it first, though. Or, okay. All righty. I, the clerk of the board of selectmen of the town of Situate, the town certify that the meeting of the board held January 22nd, 2019, of which meeting all members of the board were duly notified and at which a quorum was present. The following <coughs> votes were unanimously passed, all of which appear uh, upon the official record of the board in my custody. Voted the sale of the $7,685,000 general obligation municipal purpose loan of 2019 bonds of the town dated January 30th, 2019, known as the bonds, to Raymond James and Associates at the price of $8,485,784.20 and accrued interest is hereby approved and confirmed. The bonds shall be payable on January 15th on the, of the years and in the principal amounts and bare interest at the respective rates as follows. Do I need to do the whole table? Mm -hmm. Okay. 2000, 2020, 665 percent. 2021, 620,670,000, 5%. 2023,570,000, 5%. 2024,485,000 2024, at 5%, 2024,50 at 5%, 2029,435 at 5%, 2030,310 at 5%, 2031,310 at 4%, 2032,295 at 3%, 2003, 2033, sorry, 295,000 at 3%, 2034, 295,000 at 3%, 2035, 2,295,000 at 3.125%, 2036, 295,000 at 3.125%, 2037, 180,000 at 3 and a quarter, 2038, 120, at 3.375, 2039, 120,000 at 3.375. Further voted to approve the sale of $8,596,000 general obligation bond anticipation notes of the town dated February 1st, 2019, payable December 13th, 2019. The notes to Jeffries LLC at par and accrued interest plus a premium of $90,775. Further voted that in connection with the marketing and sale of the bonds, the preparation and distribution of notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated January 10, 2019, and the final official statement dated January 17, 2019, the official statement, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer to be hereby to uh, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Further voted that in connection with the marketing and sale of the notes, the preparation and distribution of the sale and notice of sale and preliminary official statement dated January 10, <coughs> 2019, and an official final official statement dated January 17, 2019, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, <coughs> and adopted. Further voted that the, the bonds shall be subject to redemption at the option of the town upon such terms and conditions as are set forth in the official statement. Further voted that the town treasurer and the board of selectmen be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver continuing and significant events disclosure undertakings in compliance with SEC Rule 15C2 through 12 in such forms as may be approved by bond council to the town, which undertaking taking shall be incorporated by reference in the bonds and notes as applicable for the benefit of the holders of bonds and notes from time to time. Further voted that we authorize and direct the town treasurer to establish post-issuance federal tax compliance <coughs> procedures in such form as the town treasurer and bond council deem sufficient, or if such procedures are currently in place, to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain the tax-exempt status of the bonds and notes. Further voted that each member of the Board of Selectmen, the Town Clerk, and the Town Treasurer be and hereby are authorized to take any and all such actions and ex execute and deliver such certificates, receipts, or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary convenient to carry into effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. I further certify that the votes were taken at a meeting open to the public 
and that no vote was taken by secret ballot, that a notice stating the date, time, uh, place, date, time, and agenda <coughs> for the meeting, which agenda included adoption of such vote, above votes, was filed with a town clerk and a copy <coughs> thereof posted in a manner conspicuously visible to the public at all hours in or on the municipal building that the office of the town clerk is located on or, if applicable, in accordance with an alternative method of notice prescribed or approved by the Attorney General as set forth in 940 CMR 2903 uh, Section 2 Sub B at least 48 hours, not including Sundays, Saturdays, and other legal holidays, prior to the time of the meeting and remains so posted at the time of the meeting that no deliberations or decisions in connection with the sale of bonds or notes was taken in executive session in accordance with General Law Chapter 30A, Sections 80, 18 through 25, as amended, dated 22nd, 2019. Motion <laughs> made so by Ms. Curran, seconded by Second. Mr. Vignani. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Having read it into the record. <coughs> Thank you, Karen. Next, Ma budgets. Good. You Let's don't get, get rid budget. of me yet. All right. No, we're going to move on right now. So everybody grab their budget book and then turn to. One, four, five. <coughs> Treasurer collector. I have a question before we get started. Um, sure. Do, does the town or the Board of Selectmen have the authority or power to waive interest that's accrued for taxes? And the reason why I'm asking is obviously our third quarter is coming out on February 1st. And so I was just thinking about some of the federal workers and their situation. If we're able to waive the interest until they're able to pay it, is well, that something I, that the Board could consider? Well, actually, I've been told that uh, the president of our United States is uh, asked um, municipalities and other government agencies to take that into consideration. Um, I haven't personally heard of anything in writing yet. I don't know if Nancy or Jim has. Under Massachusetts State Law, Chapter 60, Section 15 gives Pam the, the authority to waive up to $15. I haven't heard anything. You know that? That, um, right now. I was just wondering only because yeah. obviously if they can't pay there's gonna be interest accruing right. I just if there's any way that we could well if you know our, our government comes up with something which I would hope that he would do something about that um, we could definitely will know? adopt yeah, that. that would be nice and just to know too to announce that uh, February 1st f falls on a Friday um, I'll keep the office open as long as I have bodies coming in on Friday. Uh, I'll stay late. Um, I don't really, haven't really discussed how late, but I won't close at quarter of 12. Okay. Um, Thank you. You guys might want to discuss that and ask, you know, and let, think about it and tell me what time to stay open until. Okay. And we'll post it. Um, but I, I want to do that for the residents, you know, to stay open later Good. on Friday. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Um, one or two highlights you want to share, Pam? Then we can get straight to the numbers. Is that okay? Okay, yeah. I don't know um, how you've been approaching the budgets, but this is my treasurer collector budget. Uh, the, uh, you know, three main ingredients are the personnel services, um, the ambulance billing, and uh, the postage. In my budget, um, as you know, uh, we collect ambulance charges uh, through the deputy collector and we get charged a fee for the collections that's in my budget and i have the postage for all town all town departments in my budget now so um, that makes my postage high uh, the only other thing i want to say is that it looks like um, jim agreed with everything in my budget except for the printing and forms he decreased it by $1,500, and that's probably because, um, you know, we're in Munis, we're in Munis and we now uh, have to pay for, it for our forms and everything to be printed. Um, payroll, we print the paychecks, you know, the all that kind of stuff, and we have to put them in envelopes and make sure everybody gets a check stub. Um, we haven't gone paperless yet. I, I think Jim and um, Bob were pro 
negotiating some of that and some of the mm -hmm. uh, union contracts. contracts. Yep. Um, but you know, it's a it's a lot more work for my department. So I just want to bring that up too that they've really buckled down and done a great job. Um, we now do payroll in house, and thank I also want to thank Nancy Holt for um, her help in all this transition. Um, but we're now doing W-2s for the first time, which uh, we don't have them quite out yet, but we still have a couple more weeks to get them out. Um, so I'm asking town employees to please bear with us. We now have water and sewer billing in Munis, and we just went live with um, motor vehicle and boat excise tax. So uh, Munis is definitely moving forward. Uh, and that's about it. All right. um, so if we're looking at the numbers on the, uh, for your um, for 145 Treasury Collector, um, top department requested about 140. No, I'm sorry, 416,137 dollars. Town administrators recommended 14, 414,637. Just a little difference under 3,000 dollars. Last year's was uh, 404,522 dollars. So um, it's gone up, but those are the costs that you explained, and um, it's pretty much um, agreed upon between the, between the uh, department request and town administrator. Yes. <coughs> From the board? No. Uh -uh. no. All right. Well, then let's move over to the next one, which happens to be tax foreclosures, which is 158. Um, how many did we last year? What, what, what numbers did you have for tax foreclosures? Well, we, uh, for FY18, uh, outstanding taxes, we, when we got them back from the deputy, there was over 93 parcels outstanding. My department split up the list. My department did a lot of the phone calls for me because uh, I usually personally do it. Um, I do, do still do some personal people that I keep on the PM list, um, but my department rocked it. We only advertised 38 parcels and I've only had to um, uh, put into tax foreclosure uh, 28. So great. they did a great job um, and I'm really thrilled with that. Uh, so of course when the um, tax title list gets smaller because they've done such a good job on collecting them, <laughs> it's hard to make the money from collecting them when you don't have as big as a pool. It was $3 million when I got here. So um, now it's about 700000 and it's because I just put a bunch on. And yep. a couple of the ones I put on are a lot of money um, accounts, and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to collect those ones that just went on. And I do have a couple of old ones in the loop that I'm working really hard with now with um, some attorneys to Good. get those done. Um, again, we have a lot of people on payment plans. Um, and, uh, you know, it is what it is. I, I try to take whatever they can give me. At least it's something. But if it gets out of control, I give them plenty of notice that it's about time the town steps in. Um, I try to keep all the parcels on the tax roll as much as I can. Question? Yeah. Is 93 parcels high, low, median? What? In your 93 pa parcels when we get back from the deputy is pretty average since I've been here. Um, we haven't got it down from 93 to 38. Only 38 were advertised out of that 93. Um, we're usually in the 40, 60-ish range when we advertise and when we take. So only to take 28 um, parcels uh, was is huge. It might be a little bit more than 28, maybe 32 or something, but it's what, it wasn't much at all this year. Um, we had a lot of people coming in for collection. So it's it, unfortunately, it's the normal people right. that's the same offenders they get out one year and go back in the next oh interesting so. well this budget's pretty it's level funded the budget for FY19 was 39,000 your request was 39,000 town administrator recommended it so 39,000 so no change there any questions on this one great um, moving over to debt service which is 720 
also uh, just a couple of things to point out with the debt uh, because we did so well on our bond and band issue it may change a little bit um, I've discussed it with Nancy and she's discussed it with Jim today uh, we're gonna wait to see the final numbers and then I think go back with all the changes at one time instead of changing budget items here and there um, so this may be a a figure that changes but it won't be worse it'll definitely be better okay, okay. Um, so again on the debt budget we try to um, do the debt smoothing uh, so we don't uh, we try to have aggressive pay down schedules um, we're going to try to pay down some debt at the next town meeting um, so we try to keep it pretty level funded as much as we can from year to year so nothing drastically kills us so the department at least these numbers are subject to change is what you're saying they're so. subject to change I think the only enterprise fund well I list the enterprise fund and budget on here I think the sewer one might change Nancy the sewer, and the sewer and waterways might change a little bit because we were lucky enough to get such a, a good premium to decrease the costs of the projects so what's the department requesting was seven million five hundred fourteen thousand one hundred sixty one dollars <coughs> and the administrator recommended that um, our fiscal um, budget from FY19 was seven million four hundred ninety two thousand seven hundred forty nine dollars so it's gone up um, about 15 no, actually more than that, about 17 grand thereabouts but in any event this is subject to change then it is okay. good yeah and questions from the board no, I mean the way that we look at this in the <coughs> planning is what is it a lot of it is the debt exclusion stuff so that number is much higher because of that the number that we look at is how much is going to hit the the, uh, uh -huh. the actual budget itself uh -huh. and if you go to that uh, the front page of the write-up it's one, it's about 1.2 right is that Nancy? right Nancy yeah I think it was, it's more on the lines of 1.5 well, not including the enterprise. No, for the general fund. We also would have short term interest. Which line is that? Oh, is that? Right. Oh, the band's not in there. Okay. Yeah, the band's not in there. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Good. Definitely lower than what we've had in forecast. But probably a, a pinpoint of probably a smidge. Right. All right. Moving on to the non contributory pension 910. Unfortunately. I assume that we don't have that anymore. Yeah. Right? The last Unfortunately, that is no away. longer an, I, an item on my budget because yeah. Mr. Yeah. Patterson has passed. Yep. He was our last one. He was a good man. Certainly was. Yeah. Um, in that case, then we're going to move on to 9/11, which happens to be the Plymouth County retirement. And again, uh, Plymouth County retirement got us all the clamped about eight percent increases every year. And again, that's not the case here for fiscal 2020. So um, it's uh, much better than we had thought. Uh, and we'll go f go with it they claim that you know they've their funding schedules have decreased again from 2034 to 2031 um, so uh, it wasn't a bad increase for the retirement um, they seem to be doing well in their investing that's good I'd like to hear that um, uh, the only yeah. other thing I like to end uh, you know add is um, so we give 2% of retirement to OPEB so again we're 80 million dollars unfunded in OPEB I like to bring that up because we really need to look at that at some point um, we'll be doing another actual actual Liddy, um OPEB. It's scary if you can't say it. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Uh, this year, so um, we'll we'll have to take another look at that. But you know, moving forward, um, 
we need to talk about that at some point. Tony? Yeah, just a quick comment. So we've obviously we've been talking about this since we started it. The, the plan is when the pension gets paid up, which I keep pushing off a year, that that's the money that will go in and start paying OPEB. With this being such a low rate, you know, this is only 3% as opposed to 8%. I've been against putting money in OPEB from the general fund, but from this, I don't mind, because this, this is the funding source eventually, right. once the pension gets paid up. Okay. So when we get a good year at this, if there's a little bit more, like if we budgeted more of this, then I'd be inclined to take a little bit more and put in OPEB, um, you know, when we have, a, Bennett, when we have a, a plus on the pension side of things. One of the things when we talk to the rating agency, they're concerned about the aggressive uh, assumptions of Plymouth County's funding schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, they assume 8%, 8% yep. return on investment. Uh, and the S&P thinks that that could be aggressive going forward. If they don't make 8%, that assessment goes up. Or they push it out into the future. Right. We can make that adjustment later. Um, but that's when when these things come in. If we if we think five or eight is a reasonable number, when it comes in at four, I don't have any problem bookmarking that to OPEB. Well, I think I, you're correct. It's it's a number that, well, it's an, um, the OPEB. We're going to have to start focusing on, you know, because I mean, if they keep pushing it out to 2034, that's <laughs> and beyond. That's a major problem because then you're you're delaying the OPEB payments. But I'm like. Um, it's not that we're ignoring it because we're not the only town in the situation. As Jim says, you know, this is assuming that we go out of business as a town, and the town is not going to go out of business. But mm -hmm. the uh, liability is there, and that's something that we, we need to begin to address. The liability is there, and yeah. we work, you know, financially, we work really hard. So we don't want to lose anything on our rating either right. because we have a lot of projects coming up in the town obviously so we want to be able to get you know uh, a good rating from that standard and pours we want to keep that okay. we worked hard to get it we want to keep it we have a great rating we do yeah and a great report that just came out so so our number here from the department it was uh, four million nine hundred seventy two thousand nine hundred and sixty two dollars uh, that's the same amount that the town administrators recommended um, we budgeted uh, a year ago four million eight hundred twenty-five thousand one hundred sixty-four dollars. So obviously we're we're budgeting more, um, and um, obviously the sooner we f we're able to pay for that, the sooner we can begin to focus primarily on the OPEB. And we pay for it on one shot. We're we're lucky we do that, so we save the town about ninety well it's about ninety-four thousand dollars and not paying it in yeah, two installments. We've been doing that. Just started doing that, didn't we? Uh, no, we've been doing it now about time. five years, yeah. five or six long? years, I think. All right. oh, I think longer. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. no. So All right, I do have one quick question. So, do you think that number's not right, Jim? The one that's in there? No, that's correct. It's for budget number. For FY20. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. But the 2029 funding assumption is subject to change going forward. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next one then, which is the um, contributory insurance. That's 914. Yeah, so this is our health insurance. Um, again, what Jim brought up today that uh, it looks like we're going to um, do much better than we had estimated. We had put in 8% hike in our budget and uh, it looks like we're gonna fall under under five right that's great uh, so again um, like I said before with the debt budget Jim and Nancy and I will get together in the financial Fi forecast committee meeting and uh, come up with new figures for both of those accounts but that should go down great. so in other words this is subject to change because it's gonna go down but uh, department requested six million two hundred sixty one thousand fifty four dollars that was what was recommended by the town administrator um, based on our fiscal budget from 2019 uh, we were at six million twenty five thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars so we've gone up significantly by about uh, two hundred and thirty thousand dollars thereabouts but now that hopefully with the percentage going from 
the proposed 8% down to less than 6. It'll save us some money. Good. Yep. Good but isn't this things. only a 3% increase in here? Yeah, 8%. This is 8, yeah, 8 do percent, my division. 8%. Eight on the active plans, and the two on the retiree plans. Questions? And we're below we're below the max of five percent increase per Maya. Second the impact co pays and things like that for change. So Nancy, I did the math again. It was so eight percent from what? This not from last year's budget. Eight percent based on the rates from last year on the active plans and then the Medigap plans, which are the, the Medicare supplementals, are two percent, and that's about forty percent. All right, but so the total percent of our users we estimated an eight percent increase year over year on the rates. So are there less people? Because the numbers from last year to this year is a three point nine percent. Right, but we're going by actual enrollment, so we don't assume we'll have the same number. So there would be some play in that. So this may be high. Last year's may yeah, be high. We have the, the full spreadsheet by plan that we, I can certainly forward on to you. Yeah, if you just make sure it's yes. if if last year's number's high, then that would make sense. But the increase over last year is only three point nine percent. Okay, we'll look at it again when we get the final numbers. Yeah. All right. Finally, taxes federal mm -hmm. nine sixteen. So we did a 7% annual increase over FY19's budget um, due to the collect collective bargaining agreements <coughs> and the settling for cost of living raises um, for the last three years. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a guesstimate. So we feel good about the 7% increase because Jim agreed with me. <laughs> so you requested $750,613. Town administrator agreed with you. It's an increase from the last uh, FY19 budget, which was $703,375. But because we've just negotiated settlement on a lot of these uh, agreements, uh, there are going to be some other increases there, which is the reason why we need the increase here for the federal taxes to pay them. That's correct. Questions from the board? Saying none? Nope. Pam, thank you very much. Thank you. Take thank care you. of your time here. Another break. Thank you. There you go. Um, all right, so we're going to move over to um, discussion the water update. I see Sean here and Eric. We come on up because I know you're supposed to be. We were going to have you here last um, last week, two weeks ago. What was it our last meeting? Um, Let's just switch chairs. But I decided to bump this because of the scheduling we had the last meeting, but also. We thought it was important to um, see if there's some more updates with the water treatment plant since last we spoke with you folks. And hopefully you can give us a little update. Not just a little, but actually an update on multiple fronts. So um, generally, you know, obviously last time we talked, I wanted to do this quarterly. So the idea is to talk about both from, I know Kevin, you had a meeting on the 15th about yep. the um, reservoir distribution with RFPs going out for continuing the um, um, iron, um, uh, cast iron pipes replacement, um, ice picking update, water treatment update, what's happening there, and anything with respect to our well that we were looking to um, get results from is whether or not it could yield up in the other watershed or aquifer up in um, Cohasset. So I'll turn it over to you to give us kind of us and also the public an update as to where we, we stand. We have it all. Good. Um, I'll, I'll start off. Um, in, in oh, and levels. also, I want to address the letter that went out because I know we, uh, which came out about the um, from D uh, DEP about you know the, the situation that the um, that all the residents received. We had to send out as a result of the um, no, to Christmas time. The the timidity, timidity, okay, so yep. the people understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Sean Anderson, the water superintendent, and um, Eric Langland, the chief operator, uh, here with myself. Um, first of all. Uh, this is just perfect timing because um, today in the mail, the uh, water department received a water fluoridation quality award for the situation um, for the water system. So um, it's for 2017, but that came in today. So just kind of cool. Who's that from? 
the federal government. Okay. What do we get it? What do we do to get it? The Department of Health and Human Services. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. What was your, what's your award for? What do we get? What do we do? Yeah. <laughs> we uh, put fluoride in our water, and do um, you want to explain? It? It's yeah. It's, it's it's basically it's for meeting or exceeding. Um, adding fluoride to the water and hitting the, um, hitting the appropriate levels and reporting the appropriate levels um, on time uh, for 12 consecutive months. Great. Um, so they're giving you, you know, an award to say that you're doing a good job with the fluoride, encouraging it, the systems that um, do add fluoride to report it, and, uh, <coughs> um, and they give out the, the awards. I was going to say, was this center in the last or the other <laughs> shutdown, and that's the reason why it's taken so long from 2017 here? Or uh, no comment. All right. You can't. Uh, <laughs> All right, please let's. Yeah. So let's congratulations. Let's go. Okay, so basically, as everybody's aware, we are working on the treatment plant. Um, we've got some major activity going down. Um, we're doing the emergency treatment on well 17A, which is a lot of the work that's going on down around the plant. Um, there's a lot of tanks, vessels, piping, um, water, hydrants. If people have gone by there, we had to close one of the entrances to the plant. Um, that's because we have pipes going across the way there. They're wrapped in heat tape and they're also wrapped in insulating blankets. Um, and what we're doing is basically, as we outlined before, we are rerouting the water from TAC Factory Pond Road to the treatment plant, and then from the treatment plant, we're running it through a filtration system, the temporary green sand filter system that's set up in one of the off buildings that are out there. And there's vessels that are out there that have the green sand in them. Um, it's kind of interesting that these giant egg-shaped vessels that the water will go through and it'll be forced through at a certain PSI, and the manganese will be removed from them. Um, that's going along pretty well. Um, we actually have the DEP out coming out tomorrow to do an inspection of the system to get us approval to shut down the treatment plant. Um, anything you want to add on that? Um, it's putting a lot of a lot of pressure on these guys working with these guys and keeping the plant up up and running at the same time. And they've been doing a great job of it. But uh, Sean's been losing his mind. No, I don't mean losing his mind, but he's been really, really, you know busy with it. There's been a lot of last minute um, little surprises, changes. Um, to be ready for tomorrow's DEP meeting, you need to test all your alarms, make sure everything interlocks, make sure if an alarm goes off, it's all going to shut down correctly because we're going to have to do that live tomorrow with the DEP present. Um, now we're doing this all running the system to waste, so nothing's going into our public water system at, at the moment. It's all going to the sewer. Until it's approved um, by DEP. Until it's approved by DEP. Um, but there's a lot that has to come together, especially right in the end here. Um, and there was a couple of, a couple of very short delays on getting the right equipment that we needed. Um, and we did have one, fortunately it was just one, we do have the three mains that are running above ground that all have heat tape and all have the blankets around them. But the bitter cold did get to one of the mains and did freeze a short section of it. Um, so that put us back a little bit because that was, happened to be the, the one main that we really needed to get chlorinated um, and to get a clean sample for tomorrow's visit. So it just, it put us back a day. We ended up rechlorinating it today uh, and we'll actually take the sample tomorrow. Um, you might want to, I mean, I don't know, according to the forecast, <laughs> reading the Boston Globe, this could be really cold for eight weeks stretch yeah. so anticipate if you had it with this first cold spell you might want to anticipate you might have it again or it might be a, a test uh, so yeah the hardest part of it is that we keep starting and stopping it i do anticipate it'll get a little bit better once we get approval and, and start running start it full time because right. right. then you're gonna get right yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Um, so that's going on pretty well besides that one problem. That one problem falls back on the contract of all the costs and everything else from the contract of fixing it and repairing that. Good. Um, so that's going up, um, I think, pretty well. Um, we have well 18B. We've got all the equipment set up pretty much there. That's the one um, near the golf course. Um, 
that's all been submitted. It's just waiting for final approval from DEP. Mm -hmm. And then that should be all set also. That one, the main one is 17A is is the one that goes and that's that's giving us 18 b is going to be more of our backup for the extra water we don't want to run ourselves short um so included with that a couple of things that are going on we had also um hooked up two generators we have two portable generators as part of the project that we do have on site we've purchased they're connected up the good thing about the portable generators we had a um a capital plan prior that we were going to take and connect up a generator we got portable generators so that we can you know use them for both projects and if there ever was something down or a need somewhere else we'd potentially be able to pull out one of those generators um, in use to maybe help with a pump station or whatever it gives us some flexibility by having them on wheels um, so things are moving along there um, the old oaken bucket treatment plant um, so I'm going to let uh, Sean and Eric talk a little about that, and they can start with the sand filters and the track vac system, mm -hmm. um, also the chemical feed system, and go for So that. I'll start it off a little bit. Um, <coughs> Eric has been in direct contact with them, but <coughs> Aqua Aerobic Systems Incorporated is the company that's going to come in and do the full replacement for the sand filter. Uh, they were slated to begin... Uh, removing it this week we never got a firm date um, that I know of I'm going to turn it over to Eric because he's been in direct contact with them yeah they they were kind of going off of the schedule um, that was in place for the temporary treatment so that kind of got pushed back and there they've got people coming from three different places um, so it was once we once they start working that means the treatment plant is offline so they're ready to go they're kind of waiting uh, for us to say okay send the first crew to start the demolition um, which won't be a problem they're kind of on standby because um, once like I said once they start then the sand filter is unavailable for the treatment process but so in other words, if we get the green light tomorrow with DEP saying you can open up the valves, yeah. then we can get them there Thursday, Friday, Monday? It's possible from the last conversation I had with them, yeah. Right. We're not going to get like three weeks or a month. No no no, 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 no. no. So, so those, just to step on that, um, there's three different groups of people that are coming out for that. There are some... Yeah, some from there's... New York. There's... New York. New York. Upstate New York. Sudbury so, has the vac truck, okay, and then the actual uh, rebuilding of the sand filter. Uh, the guys coming from North Dakota. Okay. How much warmer here? I did. <laughs> I spoke to his father on the phone and told him all about what's going on. He, he said, well, "You kind of have a weather situation there, right?" And I had to kind of explain to him. It's, we don't really know what's going to happen until the storm hits the <laughs> hits the coast. They don't deal with that out there. Yeah. So. But yeah, they're all, they're basically ready to go as soon as we okay. give them the green light. Good. Yeah. And so that's generally on schedule then, we're looking at mm -hmm. uh, hopefully yep. right yep. now. Uh, barring any unforeseen situations once everything's cleaned out, right? Yep. Good. Yep. We were trying to keep those two very tight. Um, <coughs> and the delays we had and the bad weather coinciding at the same time kind of worked in our favor because it kind of pushed it back a few days. And then the track back system, which is, uh, that's the company Ovivo uh, that's coming in to put that, that in. That's the system that goes down at the bottom of the said basins. Um, obviously, they can't come in until we get those said basins drained down, inspected, any repairs made. But everything's been signed with them. They've ordered everything that they need. They're also basically on standby. Um, and well, they're, no they're building the system out as much yeah. as they can before they ship it in from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So they'll build as much as they can in there warehouse or whatever ship yep. it in pieces into us and then when it's shut down the treatment plant itself and what we'll do is we'll remove all the sediment then they go in after we do any concrete repairs and install the track back system it's a giant vacuum that vacuums the bottom of the sedimentation basins mm -hmm. right is that the time when we know we might have a problem with 
like cross contamination or a leak from one tank to the other? Well, once tank, we yeah. get the sediment down, and, and if you were, if you've driven by the plant, you've also noticed some changes over by the ball fields. There's a whole burned <coughs> area built up there. Um, one of the things that's going to go on is the sediment that comes out of the um, basins themselves. We have to have a drying spot for them. So that sediment's going to come out. We're going to stack it up and probably cover it or let it dry, um, and then dispose of the material um, as far as that goes. So, how many yards would you typically be talking about cubic yards? <coughs> and would you have to dis would you have to dispose of it, or could it be would it be good as for as a dry material? Ideally, is what you want it as for disposal. Um, I believe they have the Bowen landfill lined up for the disposal. So I think that was, was it 2 million? I forget the figure. Gallons. Um, in the sedimentation bills. Yeah, well, each said basin holds 200,000. Oh, this said, uh, just like about 180,000 gallon capacity. But I mean, different. 30 yards of sediment or 300 yards? I just was curious. I think we're looking more. Um, get a guess. Just. I'm thinking you might be looking 300, 300 yards. You know, 300 mm. yards. It's. Uh, it's undetermined because it's it's all coming out wet. Mm. Um, it's okay. a significant amount of material down the bottom there, though. That we'll be pulling out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's ongoing. Our plan, obviously, is to have that area all cleaned up before baseball season. Um, you know, we'd like you know we better be done by then. Um, also, Sean's been working on the chemical feed system, which is going on simultaneously. That'll be going. That can go on simultaneously as we're doing the other work inside the plant, which is going to include taking down um, one of the outside walls to remove the tanks and bring the new tanks in. Um, so that'll be ongoing. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be pretty busy down there. Um, and then that includes all the new piping systems, new pumps, and everything else to take care of those main chemical feed tanks. Yep. Um, I know I've had everybody in there for a tour on it, but when you go through near the end, near where the chlorine gas is, you see those two big plastic tanks that are about 2,000 gallons each. Those are the tanks that will be removed and replaced with, um, with a different tank and a different containment system. Um, and that will go up. Am I missing anything on the plant? I think, so. I, I think yeah. we covered most yeah. of it, but that's been taking up a ton of time, just pushing it through. We're still within our schedule because we had some parameters for float time. Um, you know, knock on wood, we don't have any major problems, but we have a lot of the materials that we need on site. We ordered them on site and we wanted them on site so that they were there. So we have a lot of that um, equipment all set up and hopefully ready to go. So it's not like the guy from North Dakota comes and goes, you know what, I forgot my, I forgot this, I gotta go back. I'll be back in a week, you know, and pops in his truck and drives back. So <coughs> we believe we have everything here that we need for that. Um, any did any you, other comments? Did you want to briefly talk about the turbidity letter while we're just yeah, speaking? Yeah, that might be a good time so that people understand what happened and why, you know. Eric can elaborate a little bit on it as well. Um, <coughs> basically, the violation was a, was, was a monthly average violation, so it's what's considered kind of a soft violation. That's why the DEP gave us 90 days to do the reporting on it. Um, that's one of the most frequently asked questions that we received at the office is, why, why did you wait? to send this notice out. Um, and as you all know, one of the reasons, one of the main reasons we waited was we wanted to, um, one is that it was just a five-day event and we quickly returned the um, filtration plant to full compliance. So we quickly resolved the issue <coughs> by going to one said basin, as we explained before in a, a selectman's meeting. Um, and then we wanted to wait and see if we could get the funding necessary to do all these repairs we're talking about tonight. So we wanted to make sure we went to special meeting, made sure everything got approved, we got the funding, put it out to bid. That's when I wanted to draw up the language. And I drew, I drew up the language. A lot of it is boilerplate language. That's another thing a lot of people didn't understand until they called. Um, and people were really great to, to speak to on the phone. Um, I invited people to come in and to, and to see me and to talk to me. Um, when I went through it all, they really understood and they really felt a lot more comfortable Good. after, you know, calling. Um, it, uh, it's, you know, explaining that it was going to take some time 
and, and then the language I had to draw up, send it to DEP, have them review it. Um, then we reviewed it in-house several times, and then we pulled the trigger. It's unfortunate it went out when it went out, but it was under a deadline, so I did have to get the, the notice out. Okay. Um, but overall, there was an initial kind of knee-jerk reaction, what people called, and thought, you know, hey, I'm sick right now. You know, I think it's related to this when it's really just a flu bug that's going around. Um, this was something that happened the first week of September, first and second week, and it was only just for a few days. Um, and all of our testing, all of our bacteria testing, everything came back clean for the month of September. Um, Eric can elaborate on that. All of our residuals in the system, which mean we're getting a full kill of anything, any bugs, anything at all. Um, all our residuals were good out in the system, and Eric takes those out in the system as well. Um, am I missing anything on that? No, I mean, part of, part of what Sean was saying in terms of the timing, you need to get through the full month to know if you've had a, this kind of violation because you, you have to be, there's a threshold for turbidity. Mm. And to meet that 95% or above of your measurements have to meet that. So until you get to the end of the month, you don't know how many turbidity measurements you're, you've taken. Mm -hmm. So that also kind of underscores that in turbidity in and, of, in and of itself is not a health risk at all. Um, and like Sean said, while that's going on, every week I'm taking bacteria samples. And, and if, it, if it ever did have any effect, A, you'd notice, I mean, we would know the, the the kill ratio in the said basins, you have to meet that every time you run the plant. We were never below that, and then all of the samples taken were clean. Um, so, I mean, I can understand when people get a letter like that, they don't know all of this. Right. So they, they you know, I can understand why they can have these kind of reactions, but it really is something that's, it's only an indicator that maybe you will have a problem. And, and we did so. Questions from the board on that issue? I, cor I correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the letter said that if you were had a compromised immune system, or there were, you know, pe vulnerable people should be cautious during those. It, I thought that's what it said in the letter. It's, but it's more that it. it how do I, it, I don't it, know how to explain I, I, it. I wish I had a, yeah. a copy. I brought some of the material. I don't think I have a copy of the exact letter so with you. We are looking for that. Can I, I'll just address a little bit yep. of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So one of the things, that's the water from the treatment plant. So out of the water that the treatment plant was producing that day, we also had probably on par with about 900,000 gallons that came from our wells, and the water was all blended also. So it's not... They're, they're giving you the worst case scenario too is if if that was directly from the right. you know from it you know the system is a blended system so yeah, anyway. they put a lot of boilerplate language yeah. in it that you just required to put a lot of people didn't make it far enough down um under what does this mean the very first thing it says is turbidity has no health effects um, should be the lead sentence however i know yeah. However, turbidity can interfere with disinfection, and that's why we stress that we had no problems with disinfection during this whole time. Good. Are you allowed to add stuff to that letter, or is it really like a formula that they require? You can add stuff to it. I was already up to a one full page that I had to do a mass mailing out. Um, so I, I, didn't, I didn't want to get too wordy on it. Um, I kind of thought that it would be good for people to call in and give us a chance to explain it to them. Um, you know, I did actually have um, somebody call who uh, it does have a, a, an immune system um, deficiency, um, and she was fantastic. I asked her to come in if she wanted to, and she said, no, 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 you've been great on the phone. You, know, you explained it very well. Thank you. Good. You know, she just w wanted to check, you know. Yeah. So, All right, good. That takes care of the letter. Um, I didn't ask the board any questions on the water treatment plant at this point. Anybody have any questions on that? Because then we'll move on to the other issues. I just had any um, impact to, you know, with it being cold, water main breaks happening, any any type I'll, of I'll risk, risk <laughs> with that? 
Well, do you know, I, you know, I'm just curious. So, um, yeah, I know. I got a, I have a section here. I just here need with the whole, up, you know, the whole changeover and whatnot. With, with the water breaks, with the cold weather, you always risk potential breaks in, in different areas as the cold settles in and the ground settles and moves. Um, over the past two months, December and January, we've basically been doing a lot of day-to-day -day water breaks, but they're service breaks. There are service breaks at people's houses on the smaller pipes that go to people's houses. We found a lot of leaks there. And the way we find that, the leaks, is we take a sample of the water, we go back and test it, see that there's fluoride in it, and we know it's coming from our line, and we dig it up and repair the line. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a little trick of the that trade. Yeah. Uh, and it works great. So um, we did have one break um, that was a collar that they discovered that goes around the pipe in the service goes into, they noticed that was leaking, so they replaced the collar. But there were no significant main leaks, knock on wood. We haven't had any in a, in a little while. Um, there was a break today at the Mill Wharf. There, it's a private service line that goes into the Mill Wharf and handles some of those um, stores around that area. That broke. Um, as far as I know, they were still repairing on it. We have somebody there overseeing, helping turning the valves on and off. Um, but that was a private line break. Um, so, um, any other questions about that? Or do we How that? about either Dolan Well, the reservoir, ice pigging, oh. your oh. assistance, as He's well as it. your flushing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, <coughs> just, I'll just keep on my on my list so yep. I don't miss Go something. Um, we started interviewing candidates today for the assistant water superintendent. Um, we had two good candidates, two great candidates. Um, one's actually here. Ray um, came in to just get the water update. Um, and we're interviewing a third, um, and Bob's finalizing the time for that. And then we're going to proceed with that and go forward. Um, as I said, we've got a lot of decent, uh, very good candidates that are well, uh, you know, have a lot of experience behind them. Um, Brown water calls. Sean gave me the update on the brown water calls. We had two in December and zero in January so far on the on the list. Is it correct? Okay. Um, I mentioned the water breaks. Um, one of the other things is the PRV valve, which everybody goes, what's a PRV valve? It's the pressure reduction valve <coughs> that we awarded to C. Norton down in Humrock. Um, that's been installed and it's getting ready to go online. It has to be chlorinated. And then we also are putting two um, pressure relief valves um, on it because of the bends. And then we have to pour the concrete floor. But that's all in. Everything's in and ready to go. We just haven't done the final execution of it. One is because of the weather. Um, one, when we had all that rain and everything else, we didn't want to pour a concrete floor and have the rain coming in. And then two, with the cold, um, we've been having a little, you know, we didn't want to do it in this weather. But it's, it's coming up. Hopefully next week we're out there. And we have that completed. Um, one of the things that we brought up is um, with the brown water, a couple of the areas, we're going to look at a couple of the troubled areas and look to add some hydrants. Um, we've completed that. We've got a hydrant on Acorn and we've got a hydrant on Holly, which were two areas that had a lot of problems. Uh, we placed them there. The guys did do some flushing in those general areas. Hopefully that improves it and hopefully it gives us some, uh, some improved um, efforts to to get those areas cleaned up during the uh, you know during the summertime um, one of the issues too is we noticed um, Holly Road the water actually flows down there the way things are set up and it goes in two directions at different times of the day so it changes directions four times a day morning afternoon morning afternoon as the tanks fill and as the usage declines so in our overall um, hydraulic plan, we notice the water on Holly Street goes back and forth, back and forth. So we're hoping we can get most of the stuff with the flushing, but it's just, it's interesting. It doesn't flow in one direction. Holly is, is that in the ABC streets or is yes. that stuff? Okay. Yes. Yep. That's really interesting. <laughs> What's that? I was pointing. Yeah. Oh. That's really interesting. Um, so it is, it's, it's quite interesting and that's something we discovered in the uh, hydraulic study. Um, so ice pigging. Um, we're still waiting to get the quantity that we removed in the lab results. We expect to have that hopefully next week. Um, I spoke to them today just to confirm where it is. We're setting up a meeting um, with Adam from Suez, who 
was I, he came before the board as one of the men, uh, one of the people that were explaining uh, the whole process. Um, and what we're going to do is set up phase two of what we're going to do in our next uh, our next plan come springtime and get on their schedule so that we're all set to go for that area. Good. Um, they're you know they're looking forward to it and um, we'll continue. And then we're going to have a discussion on it. We may do a couple of the areas on the driftway again because it was bad enough that they had said, you know, you may want to do one of these pipes twice because we had so much material about it. Um, when we did do the ice picking, and I think we mentioned it, but I don't think a lot of people realize it, um, one night we had problems with the ice picking when we shut everything down. Um, we had the system shut down and we were getting a lot of water coming in from different locations. And Sean found out later on that there had been a water break up in that area of the cliff and what they did is they, they just dead ended they dead ended the pipe. It was never reconnected up um, on that section. If you want to so when you that. say that, in other words, I remember you talking to maybe Sean or a Gilson Road. So the pipe should loop, and so there was a break, and they put dead ends on both sides of the pipe. Yeah, I don't believe it was Gilson, but it's in that same area. There's another feed that goes in, and we were relying on that feed in order to push the the ice, and we weren't it wasn't it just wasn't happening for us. Everybody was scratching their heads, and we ended up shifting gears and going a different direction so that we didn't, you know, lose the ice. We were still able to use it, um, and then found out later on from a former employee who's left that, um, oh yeah, years ago we had a water main break out there, and we didn't have time to fix it, so we just capped both sides. We dug down, cut out a piece of the main, and put two caps in, so it doesn't flow through that street anymore. Um, so obviously that's on our to-do list it's on my yep. Good for you for distribution crews to-do list we found it the hard way it wasn't in when we're doing this this ice picking we do learn a lot about the system the guys and Sean are learning a lot about the system yeah different gates that work why you know why they work why they don't work you know if something's put in backwards they figure that out but it's it's a trying process and, and there's a lot of gates that you know maybe a gate should have been on and for some reason it was off um, but it's a it's a really good way to uh to get that going um so to move on from that um we had our reservoir meeting um last week or yeah it was a week ago we had a reservoir meeting uh about increasing the size to that a public outreach meeting um and had some discussions with that with north south river um overall i thought that went went pretty good um let me see. How, where are we on track for that? Is that still well, two years away that we're, we're looking at? Canada? We're years away because we're, we're finishing up the design and then we're going to go for funding. And one of the sources of funding we're going to go for is a dam seawall um, funding. But the problem is if we go for a reservoir and seawall at the same time, we're right. competing against ourselves. Right. They're not going to give us both. So we'll have, to, we'll have to judge that and see how that goes okay. on a case-by-case on a -case basis. And we'll keep the board up to speed on that. Um, but where there'd be a lot more money available for seawalls, we'd probably follow up on, sea, you know, we'd push for the seawalls that have the priority. Um, we, one of the things we were going to talk about is water restrictions just a little bit as we touched it. Um, and I'm going to let Sean talk <coughs> about that. Um, one of the things that came up from the reservoir meeting, a lot of people were asking, why are we always in water restrictions? How come, how come we're always in water restrictions? It's people using up all the water and everything else. And, um, you know, Sean's response is it's, it's part of our permit and the way the DEP is going. But I'm going to let him elaborate on that a little yeah. more. And just as Kevin said, as part of our uh, new uh, Water Management Act permit, and DEP is going around and renewing everyone's permits lately, um, you see it on a town by town basis right now. And one of their uh, key goals is, is water conservation. They really want to see that and they want it <coughs> in your permit. Um, so we're required to put out those those water restrictions it's not it's it's calendar um, triggered you know so it's May 1st through September 30th every year those signs are going to be up um, it just depends on what you know which sign is it going to be the just the blue sign saying that the normal water restrictions or is it going to be a red sign saying we're in a full ban um, the red sign comes out that one's um, triggered by the level in the reservoir so again that's in part of our water management act permit and it dictates <coughs> when we go into those water restrictions. Yes. 
I'm really glad you uh, addressed that because I think that's a really uh, pretty big misperception out there in the public with why the restrictions are always put into effect. Yeah. I think it would be a great thing for our Water Resources Commission to annually put something out to remind people why they're in, I mean, I know in the past when I was the liaison, they did a lot of that proactive uh, communication and to help you keep that top of mind annually as to why. You know, it's a water conservation effort, really. Mm -hmm. It's not that we're in crisis, it's to avoid getting into crisis. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And that's a good point. One of the things, with, with the whole state, I mean, the amount of water that's being drawn from every town, not just situate, but um, the aquifers are getting depleted. You know, they're not recovering as much as they were in the past. <coughs> so it can't be, that's why they put the restrictions on it. You can't just dig a well and pump 500 gallons per, per minute out of it and, and go from there. Um, so they're, they're monitoring that and trying to recover, recover the aquifers as much as possible. Yep. That covers that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sean, how would you respond to somebody that, that asks you whether Situate has water? Um, I, I would say that currently we have more than sufficient water to meet the needs of Situate um, and future growth, especially given the capital that we're proposing, some of the improvements that we're proposing to the system. Um, it's a matter of, you know, people being reasonable with their water usage. So we have a permit to pimp, pump, what is it, 1.5, 2. 2 million gallons a day? How does that? 1.85. 1.85. Well, yeah, but you can only use, isn't there a buffer? Oh, yeah. Like 90% yeah. of it or something. Yeah. Um, how do you respond to somebody that says we shouldn't develop in this town because we don't have enough, money, enough water to, for new residents? Is that... That's, I've approached the DEP even about that, and it, it gets really um, hard to say no. It, it's, it's not just um, a board decision to say yes or no to that. Um, the state has to get involved, and even other organizations. And not have to that, get but involved. from a water perspective, we have water. We do. Right? We're yeah. conservative about it. We have our Water Resource Committee has a lot of experts on it, and we have a very strict, uh, very conservative policy on it as well with mm -hmm. our sprinklers and all that other, you know, bylaws and stuff that we have. Yeah. But, but there is water in the town for people. They shouldn't really worry about the fact that there's not enough water to, to provide the citizens with their needs. Correct. Yep. Good question. In, in the summertime, you know, the reservoir drains, that's, that's part of the deal. But a lot of the capital projects that are going on are designed to supplement that. Um, the TAC factory pond, the green sand filter that, that's coming in into play, um, that's a, you know, you're looking at probably 250 um, gallons per minute out of that well under typical circumstances, which when that gets on, that'll be a huge boost to the, to the system. Um, one of the things that we're doing with this treatment plan um, is well 18b we didn't use well 18b at all last year and that's the well that's over by the golf course we didn't use it because it had high manganese coming out of it the manganese keeps getting worse and worse there so we didn't use that well at all so as part of this partial treatment that we're doing for that well system we're purchasing that material that we're getting for this and we that's why we're having a little time with the DEP getting the approval on that particular well because we plan on keeping those filters so that we filter the manganese out of the well before it goes into the system. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be an improvement. And that, that well directly affects that water flows down to Front Street. Right. And that's one of the issues in the past we think we've had because there's times when that well starts pumping out a lot of um, manganese. manganese. Sean time. recognized that mm -hmm. and came up with that and kind of came up with that plan and has been working with this company from Rhode Island for probably five or six months, yep. even, even before we were talking about doing the mm -hmm. shutdown on how to get the, the system in. And it's, I believe it's taken DEP just a little bit longer to get back to us with the approval because it's a permanent installation. Mm -hmm. 17A was a, a, you know emergency temporary. Um, 18 is going to be, once we get this approval and put it online, we're going to be able to use it year-round if we want to. Which we can still use that well year-round, even though we're putting a lot of manganese out, we're not in non-compliance. Right. That's correct. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make any sense for us if we're ice picking, doing everything else to just pump like crazy out of that well. 
Um, okay, so that being said, um, talking about wells, we've also been doing work at the Dolan Well. We've been out there, we did a lot of drilling. We drilled some test wells. Um, <coughs> we did me. water tests, we did water quality tests, and we did water um, evaluations on how much water we could get out of there. Um, and that's all submitted with, to the DEP looking for permit approval to take the next steps for permitting. So that's, we're hoping to hear maybe within the next month we get some feedback from DEP on where we are with that well, um, how that's going. Um, and, and, you know, if you get approval, what's the timeline? Well, our, our approval, if, if we get approval, we'll complete the design for it, and then we'll come back, we, we'll go through the budget process, look for funding for that, right. um, and then we'll fund it and, you know, build a, build a it's, it's actually a well field. It's not a deep well. It's shallower wells. There's a perched aquifer over there that rejuvenates. So the good thing about that well that was identified years ago is that's kind of maxed out in um, May, June, July, which is when we need our water most, and that'll be that'd be a good source of water to pick up at that time. Um, so that's that's why that well's real appealing. Um, it might be a well you use full time all year round, but when we're in our dire needs for water, that's that's the best time to get water from good. that area. Um, so that, and, and the only other thing I had on my list is our next water project um, is scheduled to uh, go out for bid. We're hoping to have a bid opening next three to four weeks, uh, provided we don't have any uh, issues. That's um, for the uh, cast iron pipes? That that's the cast iron pipes. Um, that's Oceanside Drive. It also takes up Turner. Um, we're also doing a lot of the service um, relocations on Gannett Road. So we're taking the services off the cast iron pipe and putting them on the transite pipe. Yep. Um, it also has, there is a section of um, right by the tank at Creelman where we're looking at potentially replacing the valves. <coughs> We've got three valves that are not working very well right now. So if there was ever a break over there, we mightn't be able to control it until we drain the whole tank. So. Um, we we kind of work cautiously around there to say the least so that's going to be one of the areas that we might have to drain the tank and then replace those valves okay. um, which is always very exciting <laughs> also in that contract is the second pressure reduction valve down in Humrock we did the larger one and then the next one's a six inch which is a smaller one but we did the most the one that would take up the most area and be the most um, disruptive we did we did <coughs> in the winter for the with the funds that we had um, Other than that I, flushing, give is there flushing for the spring that you're intending at all, Kevin? Or yes, we would definitely plan on flushing. Um, we have to see where we are. We want to make sure the plant's all complete and everything's up running in the plant before mm -hmm. we Makes set sense. flushing up because yep. we wouldn't want to drain our water Makes sources. Makes sense. Yeah. Right. Uh, hopefully, awesome. knock on wood, we we are in good shape and we do have a flushing. We are flushing in the spring. And we'd like to coordinate that with uh, Suez and the ice picking as well, just to make sure it's, um, you know, that they work, they coincide with each other well. Makes sense. You yep. know. Yep. All right. For the update, any questions? Appreciate it only because, you know, people watching and yep. we said we we're going to do it. And I think it's important for everybody to know that we do and things are moving along and and when the next break happens if it happens people are going to say they haven't done anything we'll be like yeah <coughs> we have just got to go back and take a look at the video what we're doing so all right great and if anybody has any specific questions sorry to, you know reach out to me or call the water department sean and we can get more detailed on it mm -hmm. uh we could have talked hours yeah um <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 you couldn't. I can tell you that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Aaron and then Maura. Yeah, right. one general. Next, so next quarter, when we have this conversation, it, will, it might be really useful. Uh, you covered a lot of stuff. For me, it might be useful if you just um, even just gave us a quick timeline of this is what's happening in the next quarter. Um, real, not detail, because you covered the detail in the conversation. Oh, okay. Because um, there's, you know, there's a lot going on. Yeah. And it, it and it takes a lot of um, it, it takes a lot of effort from from a lot of our resources. We're putting a lot of resources, um, yeah. manpower wise, in, in 
you know, brain power towards getting all this stuff. So. <coughs> okay, the new guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say that's we not a bad thing it. to have like yeah. an update and saying, okay, from the next update, this is what's happened. So yeah. on a timeline, you can see a progression. Yep. Mm -hmm. I only say that because I know we'll from the we know it, but people have an idea of like, okay, since the summer, this is what's been going on. There has been progress <coughs> without some people maybe suggesting something that's inaccurate, which sometimes happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, things are moving along pretty steady. Um, I'll tell you what, I know that you got the engineering administration, highway, snow ice, public uh, grounds. Do you want to do water first? And yes. then uh, Sean has the furthest <laughs> ride. I'm waiting think, I don't think DEP inspection is 730 tomorrow. I don't think Eric needs to worry. He's all set. Yeah. Unless, unless you want Eric to. It's a busy to day first. tomorrow. Uh, Thanks, guys. You're doing a good job. Thank you. Thanks, sir. I mean, do you want Sean here for the <coughs> water, or do you want to do it, Kevin? Oh, no, we'll do, let's do it right now. By all so means, let's go to uh, 450, please, in our packet. Well, I think to show you where my, my head has been at, I thought this was capital tonight. It's, uh, I, I brought both with me, but I thought we were going to be reviewing capital because I just couldn't. It's all right. We'll get you yeah. tomorrow night. Yeah. Let's get you into the. Um, it's way in the back, right? 65. Oh, 65. Oh, maybe not. It's all in the back. Yep, it is. Okay, very well, it's because our. Water ways. Not a lot of, not a lot of changes in my budget. It's a second one from the back. Oh, oh yeah. Here we go. Well, we don't need to talk about uh, what you're doing. What you're doing, we know that. So we <laughs> can right I can start over. Uh, no. Find it? Yeah. <coughs> All right. So for the water, I got it right here, right? Mm -hmm. Department of Water. Yep, total. You're looking at a department request of five million three hundred forty-eight thousand nine hundred and seven dollars. Um, <coughs> town administrators recommended five million two hundred thirty-five thousand nine hundred and seven dollars. So that's uh, a difference of a little over about $110,000 differential, um, but it is up from the prior fiscal budget of four million three hundred sixty-six thousand six hundred forty-eight dollars. Yes. Correct. Correct. Um, and the difference, pretty much between um, town administrator and your budget, Sean, mm -hmm. is. Yeah, just positions and yeah. debt. Positions and debt. Just in the debt. Yep. Yeah. Who are the, what are the new positions? The assistant oh, superintendent. Assistant. Questions from the board? Just why the debt? Why is the debt <coughs> so different between the budget and the? The ban that you approved this afternoon. Oh. It seemed like so long ago. <laughs> um, we're still trying to get financed by Clean Water Trust, so we pitched our bets and went a little high on our estimates. Great. Okay, that's good. All right, Sean, thank you. That's it. All right. Thank Take you. That one. All right. You want to handle the other ones? <laughs> one quick question. Does a revenue cover this? Revenue does cover it. So two point. The revenue is proposed at 2429. Yeah, is that right? Am I looking at the right number? No. I'm sorry, five, 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 two, three, six. Yeah. And this is five, two, three, five. <laughs> We've got a thousand bucks. You're covered, yeah. 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 Woohoo. <laughs> All right. Th Sean, thank you very much. We're saving that for an emergency. <coughs> yeah. All right. Let's get to engineering at 411. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. Have a good night. See good luck you tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. John, you're here for this one, I assume. Yes, sir. Mr. Here. Chairman, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. the board. So anything, uh, I know it's 930. We've got still some time here, but are there any one or two highlight things that you want to talk about with the engineering department that you're kind of proud that you want to at least get out there so that we know, public knows? 
for for new challenges new challenges <laughs> or, 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 or any accomplishments i mean anything between i mean the intersection at hadley and jericho road looks great, great job yeah there. that Being came together with, with mike's help in the highway department managing that um the culverts for Bill's, uh, Bailey's Causeway and Gilson Road, yep. uh, the bid opening for that's tomorrow. That's uh, actually so we assisted with the preparation of uh, the uh, bid specifications for that. Um, continuously working with FEMA um, with the many storms uh, from the past. We're still working through Juno, Sandy, Nemo, um, trying to get FEMA to consolidate them into a single storm so that we're not moving three rocks from the first storm and go by three from the second storm and yeah so hope we're hoping they're entertaining that yeah <laughs> Shell, what was the engineer's estimate is it is it public information on Gilson just curious uh, I thought it was four uh, for a single 400,000 okay. I thought was the engineer's estimate um, when we spoke to contractors they were cheaper than that that's why I second guessed um, just for Gilson 400,000 yeah um, and that one will watch the storm events in terms of oh, what were the specs like uh, 36 inch RCP no it's a box culvert oh all right. yeah that's, that's uh, nine by six um, right. so we're hoping right in yeah the debris that used to get caught yeah. isn't going to get caught any longer with that but I mean they make those right in Marshfield so right yeah what will that be done uh, the bid openings tomorrow so oh, we could okay. award the contract relatively quickly um, but it's watching the storm events um, now that some of the revetments damage at the by Dickens and Peggotty we're getting some more wash over into that secondary marsh right. um, I just hate to have the road open and have an event like that take place um, we will the plan right now is to detour the road as well um, so we'll close it we've been working with police and fire and we think it's the quickest way to do it. Get close the road down, keep the people out, the cars out, and get the work done so and put it back it together. It will be an inconvenience, but it will be a full a full detour for a while. Um, we could do a temporary bridge, but that just drives the cost up. Is the co is the culvert um, before? Um, what's the road that goes into Fox Townway? No, 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 no right uh, Townway. it's right before Townway. So no, it's it's you, before. Can Townway. you take it's a left in, if you're coming off Gilson? Take a left into that area and come out on uh, Old Driftway or you have to go all the way up to um, uh, uh, right from Town Way or uh, the right, one so you, you're thinking that, of you, know, think of uh, Huey. you won't get to her own get house. To that. Nope. Okay. No. Right. up so Gilson you have to go up Gilson down around, uh, Driftway or cut through that I got you. that small neighborhood on the side can yeah. I just ask you a question on this yeah. topic just because I was driving by on Saturday uh, Sunday I think um, is the anticipation that this fix is really going to help the water level rise in there during these storm events like is that what's holding it up no, it's, because it's what it'll so do is it'll high. evacuate quicker it'll what it'll 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 that water will move out of there quicker because right now the water will go up and over the road also it's not just the culvert is that what you mean yeah i mean i just i'm just looking at that entire marsh and yeah. how much it's coming closer and closer to uh kent street or yeah mm -hmm. kent street turns into kent yeah. street right there right um, and just, I was thinking, is this culver improvement going to? No. 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 All right. All More for that secondary marsh that's around the, the neighborhood that John's okay. talking about. Yeah. Right. And the big thing is, it is when I said it will <coughs> evacuate, that will drain quicker now because you've got a big, instead of having a half crushed pipe that's taking the water out, you'll have a big culvert and then yeah. it'll flush it out quicker. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. And mosquito control was out. A few months ago opening up all those ditches so all see ditches. some improvement out there already yeah so um, I also want to give Sean some kudos and his staff um, we had the uh, seawall failure over at Glades Road where we had a, a large section of undermined um, seawall right and um, you know we responded pretty quickly in getting that all uh, all repaired patched up coming up with the design uh, working with conservation and, and working with everybody to make that work um, and I think if we didn't respond that quick, we, we would have some serious problems over there. But um, they did a really nice job. Can I interrupt on that for one second while Sean's here? On that, I'm trying to find it. We did receive a letter. From North Beach 
Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, Sean. Can I Absolutely. jump in on this? So a uh, correspondence will be reading this, but since you're here, the North Sitchewa Beach Improvement Association wrote a letter um, that um, would like to express their appreciation for the immediate response for undermining the seawall long glades, and it goes on about why it was so dangerous, and the board and its members and area residents thanks those responsible for coordinating, planning, and acting on this repair. So. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Great. Yeah. So Thank they you. definitely noticed and appreciated. So. They also yeah. brought cookies, too. Yeah, I was just oh, going to say that. <laughs> they all brought a whole Thanks, Norse. Yeah. Obviously, you ate them. <laughs> sure. no, it was, all right, let's it get was to scary. the budget. So <laughs> right now, the department requested $715,000. Um, town administrator said $515,000. Last year's budget was 653951 so there's a there's a difference of about two hundred thousand dollars. That's in the roads and seawalls. Okay. So we move from the operating budget into the capital budget. Okay. Other than that, that's it. Questions from the board on this? Okay, so this is the money from the override, and you're moving it from here to where? Yeah. And it, but it has to go towards seawall or roads in the cap. Yeah. Why? Uh, it's a borrowing in those as opposed to well, one's cash and one's borrowing, right? Um, we didn't have the operating funds to keep doing it on the operating budget, to be honest with you. But that's what we, that's why we did the override. How long ago was that? 2012. Yeah. How many years ago was that? 2012. Seven, eight. It's 2008. Yeah. No. So we had. But we're still doing it. We just had to move it out of there. Otherwise, we would have to find another two hundred thousand dollars of cut in the operating budget, which would have meant people. Well, that's. We've talked about this in the past. We, we said the day is going to come when this is, is going to happen, and that's why we wanted to make sure that. Well, I can't remember. Was it 400 total? Or? It was 400 total, and we reduced it to 350, 350. for projects and 50,000 for the coastal resource officer when we, that person lost their grant money. Right. So we're slowly depleting that. We're still, we're still doing it. We just moved it to another line. Yeah, but it's not. The money's coming in here. But it's going out there, maybe. Hmm. All right, let me think about that. It's, it's going into the capital. Still have the same. Yeah, but capital's not money, capital's expenses. Right. right. For, so it's going to be a part of the capital project. It'll now be debt, or it'll be. Funded from free cash. To bar, they're both borrowing out of this. Mm -hmm. So he has a, the same amount of money to spend, just coming out of a different mm -hmm. pocket, basically. All right, well, we're not voting on it tonight, at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, yeah, but to Tony's point, it was a commitment that we made. Look at it. We can talk about it. Might as well second. All right. So let's um, let's move on at this point. Again, we're not voting on it, but we will um, circle back to that. Um, Sean, I think that's it for you, right? Transfer station. Oh, transfer station. Okay. Yes. Do you doing that one? Sure. sure. Which happens to be four three three. Actually, I was going to say, why don't we have Mike Breen come on up and okay. and also. Um, Will, why don't you guys come on up? I usually would have the whole department. I didn't realize you guys coming in from the uh, office. There. I was going to say, and we can just go right to it. So transfer station 433. It's in the back. That's in the back. Enterprise. So which is really uh, 63. The sewer. I should dog you to that. Second one in. Transfer, here it is. Everybody got it? Yep. Okay. Did we get new bags? <laughs> because they are ripping. That's the first time I've had really bad bags. They're just literally. Really? Well, that, no, that's good to know. I need to know that. Yeah. yeah. Just a heads up there on there are. Yep. Yeah. When you spec them, there's a mill, right? They have to have a certain, certain We've been using the same number. company for 15 years. We've been, that's why I'm surprised. There's a whole lot of South Carolina we've been getting. Uh, no, but cool. if we know that. I just, I, the recent batch I got, 
I kind of just easily like ripping apart, and then, you know, I've never had problems with bags. Well, you only put things. 30 pounds worth of trash in a 30 pound bag. <laughs> <laughs> you put 60 pounds in, <coughs> yellow rip everything. I've been trying, you know, <laughs> stuffing. Um, okay, so we're at right now. Um, say, how are we doing at least with the with the enterprise fund? Are we uh, losing, making? What's the yeah starting to deplete? Uh, it's been a challenging year on many levels. Um, staffing, uh, there's a whole crew down there now, uh, except for Pat. Um, so there was some hurdles there, and in the newspaper every other week, the recycling market um, keeps changing. In fact, um, as early as last Thursday, my thirty-dollar glass going to New Jersey called and said we're not coming to get your glass anymore. Mm. Oh, we're oh, calling wow. Hingham, we're calling Kingston. So the scramble's on now to find a new. I did find two more contacts, um, but I think some of the difficulty may be trucking. Um, I do have an offer to come collect it and take it. Um, and right now, all our vehicles are prepped for snow. Um, so for us to haul it, so I'm going to have to do a little shopping. When did we start, stop uh, bringing it to Raynham? A while ago? Um, over the summer in June, uh, when I came across Pace, it might even have been earlier, and they were hauling it for free. No charge even for the tonnage. Really? Um, that lasted, and they told us it would uh, a couple of months, and then it went to 30. Um, we were paying 80 in Taunton. So I and we were hauling it, weren't we? And we were hauling right. it. So I said, right. sure, Time come up in no New Jersey. Yeah. They said, if yep. you can fill our truck, minimum 24 ton, um, we'll make the trip. So we'd fill him up, put him on the scale, make sure he, he was happy with his weight to go over the roads, and off he went. Um, significant savings. Now we're back. The price I had was 60 yesterday hmm. um, with a trucking cost that'll come into play. Why such volatility? Is, is there, are they running and, out of and pieces source, for it? Yeah. Um, in fact, I got a pamphlet at Lowe's. They were using glass in countertops. Hmm. And I researched the company there in New Hampshire. So I reached out to them to see if they're interested. I Good at least you. opened the door. Uh, whether <coughs> we have to bring it to them, that's a different um, discussion. But oh, um, it's moving. Uh, in all directions. Plastic is starting to get as expensive to throw away as it is to recycle. Mm. Um, and I'm so not sure how like DP is going to handle that. So we're obligated to recycle the glass no matter what. And right. So right now we're only getting, is it, you said $60 per? That was the price. I haven't signed on with them yet. I was paying but what 30 would that be? But $60 per what? 60 or per ton. Per ton. Okay. Yeah. Plus a hauling. What happens with if we were to do? Uh, I'm saying curbside. Do these um, companies do they take it or uh, do they say to people, you're obligated to deal with your recyclables? Yeah, they're doing the same thing. Um, Pushing it back. Th on. That the grant that you're going to see next month here in Situate that we're part of, um, a compliance officer will be at the transfer station to educate mm -hmm. um, what should be thrown. And there's a lot of plastics that should be just thrown in the trash that are being recycled. And then when they get to our vendor and they sort them, they end up with a big pile of trash and no recycling. Well, they got to throw the trash out. Right. Hey. So they're talking about, yeah, fining us. So that, that degrades our level. When you sell your recycling, you're rated at a certain level yep. where, you know, like an A might be the best. That lowers our level so we don't get as much for our recycling when we, when we get rid of it. It's like the plastic bags. You don't want them in there. They're useless. But they, they both throw them in thinking it's What they do is tangle. they bind up and tangle the, uh, the bailers. Well, that's a discussion we should have at some point, maybe sooner than later. Yeah, we, I, I've been watching the rates um, again. Um, I hate to do it, but I'm trying to see what improvement we made from last July's upping the specific, um, the C&D waste, the construction debris, um, what kind of revenues we'll bring in if we raise those rates on the computers and the things like that. The C and D, we did raise the rates, I heard from one person, but you have to. Uh, the, the, there are yeah. fewer places, and it's just rates are going up. That's right. Yep. yep. Right. Stay current with it. Yeah. All right. So <coughs> let's turn to your um, budget here. Let's see. 
I'm looking at the um, revenues. Let's see, what are we doing? Propose this revenues yeah. for this year. We're anticipating will be one million three hundred ninety-one thousand four hundred. Your uh, total operating expenses anticipated to be one million three hundred seventy-four thousand one hundred and thirty-nine dollars. Am I looking at the right thing here? Mm, I got a different end number. number yeah, yeah. Oh. And then, um, so we're looking at a surplus of about 17,261. That's what we're anticipating. Um, debt service debt. is 16,350. So a total surplus of $911 is what we're, we're looking at. We're really running it at cost, hoping nothing goes wrong. We got a thousand bucks, just like the other one. Yep. <laughs> um, right. The, um, the, Bulk waste revenue line goes up considerably. From are you going to raise the price? Is that how you're going to get 466 out of that? I. That's what we were just. I think when about. I projected, that's where that revenue will come from. But that's if I can keep up. I mean, as early as now, yesterday or <coughs> Thursday, my glass number changed from what I was projecting for the year. Well, this is revenue. This is revenue from charging bulky waste. Last year's right. budget was 245. Right here on this here. You jumped up front when you projected. Double? It went up a lot. Uh, almost, yeah. I'll do it. That is good. What if you cheat? All right, questions from the board on this? All right, then. Sean, I think, are you out then? You're done, right? Free to go? Free to go. <laughs> Free to go. Hit the road. Thank oh, you. Great. Oh, Thank you. Oh, sure. All right. Um, let's move over to. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Mike, and then I'll go to and cut a well. Okay. So the next one happens to be. Um, actually, you know what, Mike? Do you mind? The very next one happens to be sewer, so if you just turn the page, we'll go to sewer, guys. Or Mike. It's only been up since 4 a.m. I'm sorry. <laughs> so much work. Um, all right, let's go to the sewer. Will's young. He can wait. I'm happy to wait. <laughs> not that you're not young, Mike. Done a good oh. job, Will, on the plant. <laughs> um, let's just get to your numbers. How's that? So your department request was for $3,704,588.06. Uh, town administrator said $3,507,178. Uh, your budget last year was for $3,899,816. So it's a reduction from last year, but it's less um, than what the town administrator is looking at. Difference in your. Um, That's probably hookup fees. Let us see. The debt went down. Went down, but also the. Um, like your cost. Where is it? Can I chime in for just a second? Just sure. So, this, so um, Will's debt went down, but the part that went down is not supported by um, receipts. It's the, it's the part that's the debt exclusion that went down by a half a million, so that was coming out of the tax levy. So that didn't help him. Okay. Um, will tell you his budget was chopped. And he was still putting a quarter million dollars of retainer mix in there just to get him to raise out. Mm -hmm. Something he wants to do. I'm sure that the kind of public preface that we talked about it is that one time revenues, his revenue stream does not support his operating budget. His one time revenues help him get over the hump. that discussion and the rates 
that the rates are still not there yet. That it's going to be a multi-year process to get them there. So I just want to help, we'll preface this, because I know how difficult this is for him trying to move forward with a budget which he knows is going to cause him difficulty this year. Very well said. John? Well, by percentage, <coughs> what amount, if you're in, in I'm not going to hold you to it, what amount comes in by uh, transport, by truck? 1%, 5%? Percentage one? Uh, yes. Percentage yes. Uh, percent flow or percent revenue? Flow and then revenue. Either either one. A relatively small must be, right? Uh, Flow-wise, as a percentage, it'd be, it'd be pretty small. Um, if I were to run the numbers, it would be probably single-digit percents. Right. Uh, maybe anywhere between 1% and 4% of total flow for the facility. Uh, to Nancy's point, I was just wondering, is there, could I get, could I, could I, if I was creative, could I sneak in if situation's cheaper than some other place if I was in that business? Do you have a good safeguard on that? Uh, or, or do you not really care? Because we get, are we, are we, anybody, are we making money? If, if we limit who can come in, no, we're taking, we've been taking, uh, we limit by towns, uh, we accept septage from Situate, Cohasset, and Hingham, mm -hmm. uh, and no other towns. Mm -hmm. Um, why not Marshfield? Why not another town? I it just doesn't, I just. Um, on the background of this, I'm, I'm not really sure of. Okay. Uh, when I was first hired, we had yeah. just started In the started past, accepting that's, yeah. what, that's what Bob had started, but he's not out carting them and asking them where they got the waste from when they're coming in. He's not? N not necessarily, no. They're coming in, and most of them have accounts set up in, in their track. So. I'm just wondering, is, is, that, is that an area where we could make... Uh, are we allowed to do, make a little more? Yeah. Do we even make money on it? Yes, we do. Yeah. It's significant, and we actually and where since are we, we raised our rates since we raised our rates recently on the septage. We've noticed a kind of a sharp decline on oh, that really? because uh, Rosano Davis was using us quite a bit. But now so what they they're doing is they're waiting, letting it build up. They've got a storage Trail. facility, and right. then they take it off in a bigger truck and take it down to Taunton for for our old rate. Right. Um, so we have noticed a bit of a kickback on that. I mean, that's pretty much what, uh, I mean, th that is something that as a board, I don't know if the board, when they originally um, opened it up for septage for everybody, if, if that was in the plans that you only want to take it from certain towns, you're afraid you're going to be flooded with it um, and just schedule those towns, but we, we could open it to all towns. We probably are if we're not carding people. I mean... Every now and then we've noticed something from Hanover, um, but it hasn't been, uh, it's been within our, our ranges for accepted loads, so we, we've accepted it. Yeah. And it's kind of a money maker like the C&D at the transfer right. station. If they have a sticker when they come in and, and you know, we know we make, we make money on yeah, it. It's one or two percent of our... Yeah. It's not hmm. a big deal. It's nothing. All right, so we've got some considerations, serious considerations that we need to take a look at going forward then with the budget. And and figure out the um, lack of revenue that we need to decide how we're going to deal with it. Right. Unless we do something else, we get... Well, we've talked about this. It's three things. Rates, expenses, Actions. and expanding our use. You know, we've got to get more people on the system that are in our current infrastructure. we got to let people hook up spaghetti lines or whatever they do to pull them in because we need the $16,000. We probably should have done this article before <laughs> earlier in the night um, well one of, one of the issues that we are having Tony not to cut you off is is we had a very wet summer our, our average flows are way way up due to the I and I yeah. and everything else coming in so um, <coughs> we are we're taking I'm sure wills average I haven't seen the average yet for December or you know for, for January even, but I'm, I mean, we're taking a lot of water in. It was such a wet spring. We usually wear dry. That's a good point. I forgot that. You know, so if we can, what what's the percentage again? It's always mind blowing. Like, fifty percent of the stuff that we process is the ocean. We're, so that's about yeah, forty yeah. to fifty percent in the wet season. Is it December? We had the real high tides. Yeah, we had a real high tides in December. No rain, just astronomically high tides. I think Will said they're doing almost three million gallons a day. Right, which is almost triple. Yeah, yeah. Almost triple what we would normally year, do. What it was previous year. So maybe some of the I and I work we're doing down in uh, by the lighthouse will have a big impact. I mean, 
those are the things that we have to see because we've got 750 in retained earnings and every year we're chopping away at it and we have one year left. So. And, uh, like Nancy was talking about, the, the, the budget before you, uh, I believe, is supported by revenue? Well, no, there's, there's also retained earnings. And retained budget. earnings? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it, it is shy of amounts that I think will be required uh, for purchases of, of things like chemicals for our plant, which we're required to purchase to meet permit levels. Um, I'm not certain uh, we'll be able to uh, get through the entire fiscal year at, with, with this. What line is that falling in, Will? Is that your uh, equipment parts, parts or, okay. <coughs> chemical line Shut we're gonna have to raise the rates <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah I mean what's gonna be um, so in addition to transfer station I want to probably bring this up at a future meeting to discuss it at this point I mean, there's no sense waiting until all of a sudden it's critical but we're gonna have to talk about rates short term yeah and if we can encourage 12 houses to hook up at 16 grand a house that's your deficit you know maybe my math's a little maybe it's 15. um you know there's a cost associated with it but that's that's all you need in the betterments to to cover the revenue you need nancy do you have a quick question quick hopefully the best is So well, you need, million, you need that every year. Earnings. Every year. Every year you got to bring 15 Next to 20. Next year we're a quarter million dollars in the hole before we do anything. Before right. the price of chemicals go up, before the price of... So we start at 250000 in the hole next year by using retained earnings this year. So what we were trying to work with Will was is identify those repair and maintenance items that maybe are one time or not going to happen every year. And we'll match those with the, the one-time revenues from the connection fees that we're getting in excess and try to get that out of his budget and get that dealt with separately at like a special town meeting article. So, okay, we have $200,000 extra in um, these revenues. We have $200,000 worth of identified repairs that aren't going to be in your budget, but you're going to do them separately. Trying to m at least match up the revenue source with something that's more of a one-time receipt or close out the retained earnings and you do it in your capital plan. I agree with Tony, though. I think we've been talking about this for a little while now, is that I do think we need some sort of a conservative plan to identify what areas we would bring 10, 15 homes online. Because um, I think it also is the fair thing to do with regards to other development. What? We could probably do it. It's, it's, uh, okay. I know Sean's thinking right away. And if you're, you're right. We can have that discussion. <laughs> Being 10 o'clock, let's just get to the numbers because right. it's it's going on here. Yeah. I'm not sure so. I want to discuss it right now. I just <laughs> no, 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 I know, I know. I just she want just to wants to support me. It doesn't happen often, so let her go. <laughs> <laughs> Will, thank you. I think we're all set with you. Other than that, then let's turn it over to Mike. Good uh, job. You've got, Mike. you've got a yeah. challenge ahead of you, and we're going to support you to figure out how to make it work. If I uh, could just make one note on the um, seeking additional sewer connections. Uh, we are limited no. with our capacity and flows, uh, and we may have to look into investing in I and I projects to free up capacity to seek uh, hookups and the number that would support uh, the budget moving right. forward. Absolutely understood. Yep. Like we know that. Yeah. Well, hopefully the two million we're getting will help that. Two. Yeah. An impact. Yeah. yeah. Got it. And, and Will and those guys have done a great job down the plant. If anybody's been down there recently and wants to come down for a tour, um, we had the advisory, our seat uh, capital down there last week. They did a complete tour. Everything's looking pretty ship shape, clean. Um, a lot of different things have changed. And the work that they did on the copper project, getting that copper project, yep. it saved the town saved from spending to 15 to $20 million on a new outfall, which would have been a consent order by the DEP really is praiseworthy and he's done a great job with that. Thanks, Will. Good Thanks, job, Will. Will. Before Will we're doing the, we're getting rid of the I&I &I project on Cedar Point and then that project's going to go right down uh, Oceanside, Ocean View, I keep getting that. Oceanside. Uh, it's going to go right down there. Um, Cedar Point's 40,000, Ocean is what, Kevin? Um, uh, 20 or 30, I thought it was 26 or something, no, but there's, there's other areas like the, the thing with Oceanside Drive, there are some areas where you do that, but, but your big carrying pipe goes right down Oceanside Drive. So a lot of the services, it wouldn't be something you'd change over to a 
pipe, but maybe it's, it's replacing some of the services. Um, but that's something that came up with the water project. I said the water project is, is coming out and we're gonna rip up Oceanside Drive. I know it's hard to say it might get worse um, than it is now. It might, but that's okay. And, and then eventually what we're <laughs> going to have to be pretty done. difficult. Yeah. Well, I just wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't want to be plowing down there right now when uh, it happens. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So I just, it, but that's coming up in the future. And one of the things that we are looking at is that we would do a complete redevelopment to that road. Yeah. But um, that we might have to let the pipe settle out as, as it goes. Uh, well, just to that point, because we'll move on. Providing you have a well thought out plan and tell everybody what's going to happen, they'll survive and they'll endure for the next two years if that's what we're talking about, knowing what the end result is, they will. My, my only point was we are not going to be able to expand the capacity in the plant that we can discharge <coughs> until we go back to DEP and say we've taken care of the I&I. &I. Right. Right. So, and, you know, Cedar Point is two and a half million dollars projected for 4,000 linear feet. About a 4,000 flow, it it's, can be expensive. Well, well, do we have the capacity for 15 single homes? Oh, yes. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's what we're talking, you know. I, I understand. In preparing this budget, I would have advised to proceed, assuming North Central we can get added by the regional group, to immediately pursue <coughs> phase four of the sewer expansion project. Um, but with the, the wet season this year, um, I, I would need to revise that, uh, that request. Hmm. So for, for a phased expansion, we, we don't have the capacity for that at this time. To gotcha. Fix our leaks. Mike, thank you. <laughs> well, going to push this on. To the highway, first and foremost, thank you very much to the department, you, for this past weekend. The one thing I wanted to say is, that's a real challenge when you have a huge, um, initially uh, some snow and then you have rain and an immediate thaw uh, freeze. I mean, that's that that froze pretty quickly and turned to what it is slush. So, well done. Uh, I think we're going to get flooding. Yeah. Uh, yeah, tomorrow's going to be another challenge, I'm yeah. sure. Uh, 422, actually. Um, it's tomorrow. Great. I get that right? 422? Yeah. I think it's supposed to be warm. Right. So, um, your department request was for one million two hundred seventy-five thousand six hundred twenty-two dollars and sixty-seven cents. Town administrators recommended one million one hundred forty-seven thousand thirty-four dollars and sixty-seven cents. Um, our request last year was one million one hundred twenty-two thousand ten dollars, so it's gone up. The difference between um, town administrator and yours is approximately um, thirty thousand thereabouts. Um, if, if the Board of College for Mike starts when I did my budget presentation, this is one of the areas I said if money fell out of the sky, I'd like to put it back. Um, there just wasn't enough funds to support all the stuff that they wanted to do. Um, so well, does this with the with the insurance rate going down, there might be some money falling. So uh, we'll see. Is anyway. there any new employees in here? Did we ever? Higher. Yeah, there was summer employees. We two extra seasonal, extra seasonal ex and extended their summer hours a little bit. But and then you were going to get contracting people in. Is there any money in? Yeah, we did put money in. Wait, there. am I in the right department? In the public grounds. I think 22. we did put money in. That's <laughs> oh, so 422 or 429. Hold on, I'm wrong one. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. I'm on yes, 429. Tom, public yes. grounds. When we get to that one, I'm going to ask yeah. that question. The answer is yes. So okay. yeah, you all said. Good. What are we highway? Yeah. Uh, you, you guys do a great job for you what any, little you have. Do you have vacancies, Mike, or no? No, no vacancy right now. Which, no. So um, Mike's done a great job this year um, working with the guys. One of the things that we've been doing is in, in the snow fighting, I mentioned it before, kind of kiddingly, uh, in front of the board that we're going to snow classes and snow education yep. and how to fight, how to fight storms. Um, and, you know, this past storm, I, I think we had a lot of luck I don't mean luck, but we had a we had a good result compared to some of the other towns in the surrounding areas with um, the methods that Mike has implemented. With um, we had the brining system, um, we were able to get a new truck, and we have the brining system included in that. We did brining; that was an improvement. Um, we've also used a another chemical, which is called the Magico, which the board approved um, not that long ago, and 
you know, yeah, that's you can talk been about great. it if you like. Yeah. That work well? Yeah, that's had great success. The guys don't even, they were out in the freezing cold weather mixing it up uh, just to use that instead of the salt because uh, they have such a great result. It, 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 it's helping uh, melt the, when the, it's real cold temperatures like that, it'll still, it'll still melt where regular salt will just sit on top and there's no scatter anymore where the white salt uh, would just go scattered and bounce to the side of the road with the chemical in there. It's sitting right on the road and we've had some great results with that, so. So the salt is actually, it, it's treated with molasses and, and a magnesium chloride that, that lowers the temperature. Typically regular salt you can only use up to like 17 degrees. This drops the temperature to a little below zero so that you can still use it um, and use it successfully. Um, while you're doing that, the other thing is the um, molasses and the salt actually sticks better to the road, so we have less scatter. Before I'd have people calling call me up and say, I've got scatter 10 feet into my lawn. Yeah. One of the things through Capital, we, we did purchase new trucks this year. We have some of the new trucks. We've outfitted them with sanders. We've been doing all our own sanding, or all, all our own salting uh, in-house with, with the highway guys. Good. Um, and they've done a really good job with that. They've done training for speed wise and we've got everything calibrated. Yes. Can I ask you guys a question? Um, driving around town, we've got a lot of places where we've got extensive water runoff from development, right? It's not that our drains are clogged or anything, but First Parish, Old Oak and Bucket, I don't know, those are the areas when I drive around. Yeah. This in, has been in weather worst. like this. I'm sorry. This is this has been the worst runoff I've ever seen. Yeah, it's shows. awful. What what kind of equipment do you have to take care of that? Because it just creates really dangerous situations. Because you can't just plow it, right? Yeah. It's big chunks of ice so that are all stuck there. So one of the things, there. one of the main areas that we have is is the Toll Brothers area. Um, we talked yeah, to Karen and Sean. Too. Yeah. Uh, they're having a meeting with Toll Brothers in their contract to SLT to see what they can do. But they have the resources that. to take care of that. Yep. I'm talking about us. We, we do our old, old oak and bucket. It's yeah. these are houses that have been there for you know many years where the runoff is just awful. Well, we start with if anyone's discharging illegally, and we start with uh, a warning letter that you know there's fines to be coming, and and we go forward with that. And I've been talking to a lot of people about having fixing the repairs themselves. The people on uh, Clap Road, there's a couple areas that they're getting contractors to fix their areas and the um, area over on um, and vinyl that was a, a problem we fixed that ourselves we we did some piping down there and fixed the problem so we're trying to eliminate them one by one as they, as it comes but this year there was an extreme amount of um, flooding going on and and the water table was so high that i've i've never seen it i've i've set out over 35 warning letters of people illegally discharging and I, I i feel their pain they have really no place to to, to you know, put it so they're putting it in the road but i'm yeah and honestly i don't, don't know that the couple of situations that i'm talking about are people illegally discharging i think it's just the way in which the construction has caused the water to run off their properties like just you know period just, yeah no it does happen it, yeah. is a, it is a problem and it's a concern of us i mean I, I can think of five locations that i'm not happy with that you know the, do where that, that happens yeah, yeah. so Beaver i guess dam. again i'm just curious dam road right before the light yeah oh, that, they yes. fixed that i Did thought they, yeah I where's thought that they had fixed it Beaver dam yeah. they were you can start there. going yeah. down it's like you hit up ice patch you're like right. oh so no yeah that wasn't as bad this time yeah, coming from the, the uh, condo complex do we have, do we have equipment that we can get that stuff there's up drainage in the street that sometimes we can take that water and put it into existing drainage um, sometimes it could just be a berm along the edge of the road to hold it off the road until it gets the drainage Sometimes it's just there's nothing we can do unless we want to put it in real expensive drainage. So they they salt it as much as they can. Uh, they send out the plow with the it's got a belly, belly plow underneath, yeah. so the the weight of the trucks on that plow blade can break up the ice. Try to break it up as best they can. Yeah. Um, but because they're impassable. Yeah, that didn't work today on Hadley Road up by the Toba. We tried to put that plow on it. Work. It was like a solid rock out there. So yeah. Okay. We just salted and sanded it, you know, as much and as we need could. Be, we'd, keep it we'd bring our heavy loader over and try to try to break it. But sometimes when you get that, it just skims right over the top. We can't break yeah. it without damaging the road. Yeah. Okay. We did that today. Well, I think we just went over your numbers, right? Because if not, then I'm beginning to forget. Did we not? Yeah. Good. Yep. Any further questions for Mike so we can go home and get some sleep? <laughs> 
anything on snow and ice? Because that'll be Mike will be on the snow and ice. Mike? Yeah. All right. All right. So let's public get to 423. We'll do uh, that one then. Snow and ice is 423. Let's just get that up. So your budget right now is uh, this year is level funded. Town administrates four hundred ninety-seven thousand hundred and thirteen dollars. That's what it was last year. That's what it's requested this year, and town administrators agreeing to that. So that's hopefully we don't get much snow. <laughs> so some of the things that we've been doing is we've we've been improving um, some of our equipment, and one of the things that we are looking for in the future is as money becomes available through the snow budget is adding um, side tanks to the trucks so that what we can actually do is spray liquid, um, the liquid brine as well as potentially the Magico on the salt itself as it's being, as it's being uh, put out. And that actually wettens it and it starts activating it and it sticks even better than, than what we have now so we'd have less scatter. So now we're doing it manually. We're taking the loader, we're spraying the salt out in the you yard, do, we're spraying it. And so it would, it would be easier just to spray it right on the material, though, yeah. too. Just one quick question. Um, the overtime, is that all, is that contract, all that? Or is it? So which item? Because this. Um, <coughs> God bless. Um, I'm looking the at. The overtime is actually. Our, oh, yes. It is our, yeah. our, that's what I want to understand. Thank you. Equipment rentals and purchase services my thoughts will be for the, the contractors. Rest. Sorry? Equipment, Equipment rentals and purchase services of the contractors. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, snow and ice is a line that you actually have to uh, at least level fund. In those rare instances where the state will reimburse us for a very bad winter, if you've reduced your snow and ice budget beyond what it was the previous year, you can make yourself ineligible for any state assistance. Mm -hmm. So that has to at least be level funded hmm. year to year. Yep. Which is why you resist raising it oh, because you don't want to you don't want to lock money in there, raise it to a point where you're not know you're not going to spend it, and then you can never reduce it. So. And that little storm we just had, I mean, we would have rather preferred two feet of snow, I think, instead of the ice. I mean, hmm. It's easier to plow them again than it is well, it takes to so much just more to it all the time. The state was out for 30, salt almost 30 hours. Yeah, and just salt and salt yeah. and salt. Yeah. Just keep salt and keep it safe. All right, public rounds, which happens to be um, 429. Um, I'll just get to the numbers and then if there's any questions. Department's requesting $975,193.50. Town administrators agreed to 872,214, uh, difference of just about uh, 100,002, uh, 102,000. Uh, last year it was 830,000, um, so um, a large increase in requests. Um, you do an awful lot with a little. It's the key. Um, so, um, Tony, do you have a question? I think this is one department you're going to ask about. <laughs> well, I guess the first question is, is all these come out of rental equipment. What is what is rental equipment? Rental equipment would be like the tree contractor that we will we'll so the contract laborers yeah. the contractor the, the guys that come out and fertilize the fields um, If we need something, you know special and he, yeah, as Mike said the trees um, sewer yeah. Well, there's not for this one, but or whatever whatever else you'd have for for the rentals. Yeah. Um, so that's the one that's cut dramatically. So if it's yeah. if it's there, and then is this this is where you would hire contract laborers, Jim? What we were talking about, more staff to <coughs> come in and assist them. Yeah, but the money that uh, I thought you were talking about, which is for the buildings that have um, extensive landscaping uh, yeah. that our guys really don't do. That's in Kevin's budget, facilities budget. We put money in there so he can bring people in to take care. So public safety. We don't take care of all those flower beds and everything. We'll have someone come do that. And that's a, a contract in person in facilities? Yep. Contract facilities, yeah. Why'd you do that? It's, it's too much to handle. If you, if you look at the plannings on... Huh? Oh, sorry. Okay. No, no, that's good. <laughs> I'm he didn't do it. He did it. Let's no, but I'm just saying it is... It is uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of handwork. It's a lot of real... Yeah, I mean, like around our work. fields and stuff, there's yeah, weeds. We, we take out big like mowers garbage. and we... We mow and cut no, and trim, yeah. but you know, we're not gonna we don't weed flower beds and, and do that stuff. It's just it's too time consuming for the staff we have. So we probably a lot of training it. too. Yeah. 
Yeah, but if, but the summer help, out, they're yeah. pulling out everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good strategy. <laughs> Mike, you're all set. All right. That's it all for right. you. Go to bed. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, Mike. Kevin, we're going to turn to 421 administration, and then you're done, Kevin, for the night. Keep thinking we've done it. Yeah, Mike. Last budget. It's the last budget for the night. Uh, sorry, Nancy, are you going to be here next Tuesday? I'm like wallpaper. I'm always tired around. What's that? I'm like wallpaper. I'm always hanging around. Good. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll postpone <laughs> yours until next week, okay? We'll have a lot of questions at that point. So for administration, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, your department request was 217000 Gavin, $971. Town administrators recommended one hundred fifty-three thousand one hundred twenty-two dollars. Um, last year's budget was one hundred forty-eight thousand seven hundred twenty-two. So it's up from last year, but less than what you were asking. And um, it appears to be. Is there a person you wanted that isn't being hired? I was gonna say it looks like a salary. Um, I think the salary has shifted around. Let me. You, you lost a top step person and gained a, a lower step person. Oh, so uh, Chrissy retired, and then we brought in Lucia, who's just starting off at the at the lower level. But gotcha. I don't think that wasn't all of it. Seventy grand. There was a safety officer in there. Oh, I I had requ I'm sorry. Requested that I didn't fund. With the new OSHA requirements in falling with the state, one of the things I put in a request for is a uh, is an OSHA or not an OSHA a safety officer. Is that something that we could share with other towns? I mean, because they're going to be going for We are having that discussion else. with a bunch of towns through Maya. All right, good. Uh, because it seems to be like a redundant position that every town sh should have, and yet you could probably share it amongst four or five or six towns. Right, so we are, I've had that discussion with Cohass and a couple other towns, and they're having it with Maya as something to maybe do through Maya. Uh, because obviously, if something happens, the insurance company is going to be on the hook for some right. stuff. So yeah. That's a good idea. That. The big thing is, is we need a lot of updates to, you know, to be OSHA compliant with this. Um, you know, I, I can just think of, it goes through everything from the water towers. The water tower should now have a closed ladders where we have regular ladders that go up. You should have tie off points. It's just on and on and on is significant amounts, um, you know, entire Townwide safety plans, not just for us, police, fire are affected. Uh, the library is affected now. Um, there's there's a lot of different things that are involved. In just materials, uh, safety data sheets, um, safety policy plans, the library in itself, uh, ergonomic standards. It's just a lot that that's brought up with this the new OSHA requirements, and, and it's going to be hard to hard to put together. So even if you did split it with <coughs> whoever that person was, could be busy in situ for the next year, just bring it up to, up to vote, I believe it. All right, any other questions of Kevin? Kevin, thank you nope. very much. Good job, Kevin. Thank yeah, you very much. Thanks, yeah, Kevin. Kevin. Sorry to keep you as late as we have, but between the budget and the water, that, that was a good update. No, no problem at all. All right, now. Thank you, Nancy, awesome. by allowing us to uh, table yours until next week. I guess that gets us to a review of the articles, and I believe that we were providing it in written form. Um, when you say two in the pack, are you talking about this one? Or? Right, and then there, the other ones are, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. So it appears from the special town meeting, we have six, which are kind of the standard uh, six items that we have um, for the special town meeting. Unpaid bills, budget reconciliations, no one ice, emergency costs, rescind debt authorization, pay down debt, um, and then construction of new senior center and veterans memorial gym rehab. Then the annual we have, as of right now, 32 articles. Uh, so I guess we're gonna have to really kind of go through some of these. We can well, some we can do what we did last time, Jim. Right? We take a um, you have consent a lot. Consent, so we can really shoot through a mono, most of these, of which I'll probably have 
and then um, <laughs> you guys can deal with the rest of them. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah, tonight's just the petition articles. No, I just want to at least give people an idea of what we're looking at. So the petition articles, there are three. In the back here. Uh, second page. One is an amend the zoning map for Hummer Rock Village Residential Overlay District. Um, the, um, what was handed out was a map, a zoning map. They proposed, rather. Um, I say zoning map, but an amendment to the zoning map. Um, it looks like they're looking to add... Uh, property which I think is the old boat yard it's the boat yard yeah mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. they want to um, make it part of the overlay it's part of the business district they want to put it in the overlay district so you could have business on the first floor residential on the second um, right. it's why I say they were allowed to put a condominium complex in. yeah so clearly whoever's bought the boat yard wants to build condos down there doesn't this have to go through planning Schedule for planning already. Oh, it is. Schedule the hearing. Okay. Might even be there next week. I have to look. I can't. That's hear. right on the water. It's, it's right on the. In fact, I'm yeah. not sure which it's one's on the bridge. Is it? Uh, bridge would be just to the right. Yeah, of that. Yeah. So when you go over the bridge, it's going to be on the left hand side. Go oh, over right. the bridge. And on the left hand side, it's like the boat yard. It's now a marina. You can't see the bridge, but the bridge well, is I right was, here. I wonder why it was excluded to begin with. It doesn't make sense why it is excluded. Um, I'm going to guess because they oh, want to keep the before boat yard there. Before the bridge? As soon as you, as soon as you no, get to a bridgeway, no, you, you go, go over. That's the bridgeway. Go over the bridge right left. Here's the bridgeway right so here. Go where? over. Right here. Go over. It's the bridge. So that's kind of where that guy wanted to put that bar. Well, the yes, bar was uh, right on the back side. So same, oh, same building. Yep. 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 Hmm. Not a bad idea. So well, that's one. Says. The second one is a petition article. Go green. Um, people who have petitioned to, um, that's a part of our thing here, to shut down. Terminate the lease. Terminate the lease with go green. So they put it on, so they'll, are they going to present to us or no? We'll put them in, yeah. All right, so they'll come in. And then the third one is. Can I make is, a comment on that one? Sure. Just so people people may not know, I mean, Go Green is a big place and they've got a lot going on there. But I'll tell you, before Go Green was there, it was a mess. It was over at the dump. It cost us money every month to move the stuff to get it thrown away, and we get rental income from them and a good good amount of rental income. So, um, unless there's a better solution, which I don't know that there's one. Um, Although he's got a lot of mulch there and it's wet sometimes going around there, he's working with us to try and make the town better. I do not think, um, I, I do think that he provides a huge service to this community. And I think that the town definitely reaps rewards of revenue and lack of cost to have to get rid of all this brush stuff, especially the amount that we're bringing over there. Um, to pay someone else to pull that away is uh, incredibly expensive. Enough said. There's a question as to whether or not a voted town meeting can cancel a contract that's been entered into by the town I don't think it can but council's looking at it yeah so if that's the case it won't even make it to the floor of town meeting be non-binding or something yeah I don't yeah. I couldn't agree with I'd Tony to more yeah. so well I would suspect if we can rein in and and bring him in and speak with him about all the concerns that the residents and abutters have uh, I mean the, the board's aware that I had deputy Thompson down there probably once a week in the fall, uh, we have another meeting with Mr. Lopes shortly with Deputy Thompson, myself, and uh, Chief Murphy. Mm -hmm. So, I uh, think there's a lot of things that need to be done before the spring to clean that up to make some room, but uh, we're going to start now. That's good. I mean, I think if we could provide the petitioners with some of our action plans and things that he's agreed to, it may be. I suspect the petitioners have some ulterior motive because there have been things going on, I guess, at the plan, at the zoning board, and I think it's their former um, partners, or some of the signatures to it. But I agree with Tony and Sean and, and more. I think you're absolutely right. And Karen, I haven't had a chance to have to, but I'm sure you will disagree or agree. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that it costs the town on the days off they would haul all that material from the transfer station down. So think about the waste. Number two, this is next to the sewer treatment plant. Who wants to be located next, directly next to the sewer treatment plant, right underneath the wind turbine? And it's in the industrial district, which means it's not residential. It's not, nobody's going to be living there. And we're making money off it. 
That's the key, making money. When people complained years ago that we didn't make money off things and here's a chance we're making it, I don't know what you're going to do there with those obstacles surrounding well, it's it. It's a double whammy. You lose yeah. the revenue and you accept the cost. Exactly. Right. Plus, he's what kind of revenue do we take in with from them? Over $80,000. A year? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I, I mean, yes, I think there are certainly place. issues with with some fires that you know happen with the water. I get that. He needs to, you know, there are some other issues with the, the traffic, certainly during the fall. But I'm like, you can get rid of your yard waste for free. Next question is get rid of this. How are you going to get rid of your yard waste? Because you're going to have to pay taxes. We're going to have to find a place or we're not going to do it at all. And then you're going to have to hire somebody to come take it. So that's a dangerous article if people don't really understand the impact if they really thought they could break the contract. So I'm sorry. Plus he does a good job. <laughs> and he's... He's going to work with the town to, to fix all the little quirks that we're having right now. And he's a resident. He's, you know, it's not like somebody's coming in. He's a resident who lives here. It's a small business. It's a business. It's creating tax revenue. You know, so I'm like, every... Yeah. Um, Karen, I... we Go ahead. Sorry. I've kind of jumped to <laughs> you. I, the only thing I can add is I agree that um, um, it's a useful business, but it, we've got to, you know, I know that Jim's been working hard with Officer Thompson to... To have them comply with the terms of the lease, but um, you know it's really been a problem for a lot of people between the smell and the and the and the congestion and the hazards. So that's just got to improve. But I think pulling the trigger to shut it makes no sense at all. And the next petition article is a building moratorium um, that people are looking to um, say there should be no building. Uh, going forward, I don't have it in front of me, but I think it says for. It's kind of hard to read. Can you read it? It uh, says it's it's concern over the limited water supply, and the board um, is defer any new construction in the town intended for multi-use or single-family, where the developer is going to develop more than one residence. Well, they want to shut down anything with multi-use for tenants and single-family oh, occupancy and multiple so. Um, anyway, that's well, the petition article. It'll certainly be in the advisory report. When is that legal, Jim? Up. I've had a couple conversations with council. I'm still waiting for a definitive answer. Um, Mr. Uh, John, I can never pronounce John's last name. Uh, I don't think he's here. He's on the water resource committee. Kevin and I had a long conversation with him. Um, I don't think it's it's legal to pick and choose. Uh, what Who's you wish person? to allow to hook up or what you don't wish to allow to hook up. To so uh, I don't think it's legal. Second one, I think. Uh, what's before you I don't believe is legal at this point, but I'm waiting. Yeah, I've had several know. conversations with Cindy and they can be rather long-winded and I'm like, I just need, tell me if it is or it isn't. Uh, I don't believe it is. Kevin doesn't believe it is. Uh, and I think when we're done with Cindy that the way it's presented, it's not. <coughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Moving on, discuss, vote, amendment to architect contract for council on aging project. Yeah, um, I just got the information that the board asked for last week yesterday, so. so let's put it off to next week. Yeah, I didn't see anything okay. different. Okay. Okay, so I agree to that. All right, new business. Discuss, vote, drain laners, license renewal. Okay. Hang on, I'll get down there for some. Oops, back up. Move to approve. Renewal of a the renewal of a drain layers. layers license to the following businesses: Iaria Brothers Incorporated, E.L. Margetts and Sons Incorporated. Motion Second. by Ms. Curran, seconded by Mr. Harris. Um, any discussion? No questions. No. Seeing none, all in favor, in signify order. by saying aye. 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 Great. And how about uh, one day? No, one day. Uh, what is it? Move that the Board of Selectmen approve one day wine and malt license since two. Taylor made bartending <coughs> for an event at the Citroen Harbor Community Building on February 2nd from 6.30 to 10.30. And the Knights of Columbus for an event at the Knights of Columbus Hall on February 3rd, 2019 from 6 to 10 p.m. Motion by Ms. Curran, seconded by Ms. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 Takes care of new business. Um, Anybody want any liaison reports? Anything they want to say significantly? <laughs> I can't remember anything. <laughs> All right, moving on. Correspondence. Uh, I don't think there's much. You read, nope, seem to I read everything, right? I mentioned the letter from North Sedgwick yeah. Beach Improvement. Sedgwick Harbor Business Association is having um, a celebration of 11 years of their 
uh, work on the Thursday evening, January 24th at the Mill Wharf starting at 6 o'clock. Invite everyone to that. And MIA, MIIA has sent a letter, um, which we've already talked about, which was the um, receiving the wellness department, receiving the best newcomer award. Great. And I think that that is it. That's it. Motion to accept the meeting minutes of the Board of Selectmen's meeting held on January 8th, 2019. Oops. Motion by Mr. Vignani, seconded by Second. Ms. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there anything anybody else wants to share at all? Any other business that you know? I just have one quick thing. Um, I was uh, spoke with, with a few of you individually about trying to set up a meeting where we can kind of bring our minds together and talk about all these projects that are going on, the fields, the senior center, the rec, the gym, the all these sorts of stuff, and just kind of have a working meeting where we could hash out our ideas because we really haven't talked about it a lot outside of going to meetings and stuff. And some of the stuff is coming together not as I envisioned, and I, I think some of you feel the same way, so it may be a good idea to get a meeting together. So I didn't know if we could set one up for maybe beginning of next week. Let's take a look. Now, we have a meeting next one, Tuesday. We do? Um, we yeah. do, on the 5th. So I guess, don't we? Do we have a meeting next? Or wait a minute, what's next the 29th? week? 29th. Oh, is it the following week? week? The 29th. Okay. Actually, no, you know what? I think I should have it on my calendar. We're meeting on the 5th, but next week is the 29th. Jeepers, I'm already two weeks. Yeah, ago. right. It is right. The 5th is when we're meeting. Yeah. The 19th. So next week is the week of the 28th. So, um, let's see. Um, so, can we look to maybe can we circulate some dates for next week? If not, then can we try to circulate dates for the following week? I know we have one on the 5th. Uh, you know, maybe Tuesday, coming? maybe next Tuesday, the 29th. I won't be here. You'll be here? All right, well, why don't we email when people are going to be around? Yeah, if we could. On an off Tuesday night, if you want to try to do? The 12th would be the off Tuesday night. You do Monday or Tuesday or? And you went to February vacation, right? No, the February vacation is the 18th. Yeah, decisions. Right, I think we have to do it have next week. Well. Is the 5th, um, is there, is that agenda it's really? Crowded. Crowded? I'd like to do this by itself. Yeah. And I think I'd like to do it next week. Because I think the next time we vote, it's going to have impacts on some of the articles we're talking about. Yes. Or potentially could. So, um, when are you in town next week? What about the 31st? I'm in town the 28th and the 1st. And the 1st? What day is the 28th? Monday? Monday. So capital planning is scheduled to, to talk about the senior center on Wednesday. Why don't we do it Monday? Okay, let me Monday check. Wednesday. i, I got to get coverage for something, um, which I can try to confirm. So let me see if I can get coverage. So you're thinking Monday the 28th? Works for me. We may need a bigger site. Yeah. Because people may want to attend. I'll have to see what's available. Okay. Um, so you, the 29th you cannot make. What about the 30th? She's out 29th, 30th, and 31st. We might be able to do the 31st. Thursday? Yeah. All right, can we do this then? Can we try to, can you, if you can do the 31st, I'm clear with the 31st. Okay. It's just the 28th is, I got to find out if I can get coverage. I knew the 31st is fine. Good. Can you do the 31st? Um, uh, yes. Can we make it 7 p.m. though, so I can get here? Yeah, we can make it 7 or 7.30 if it makes it easier for you. So Wednesday or Thursday? That's Thursday. 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 And we'll try to see if we can get. So I'm gonna go with the 31st. Let's do the 31st. 7 p.m. and I'll look for a big location library public safety building and if we go to the library i want to make sure the library understands that it will go past nine possibly so they better get their act together make sure somebody's there we're not getting kicked out at nine o'clock on, on thursday okay well let's do kick them out 
we can use a school. Public safety. We could. To try public safety. Public safety, yeah. Or public safety, if not, then we could try the... Or what about Performing Arts Center? Well, either that or the middle school. They have all those seats. Oh, yeah. That'd be a cool place. We've never been there. Cafeteria? Yeah, at the gates, the new gates. That'd be nice. Yeah, ask them. I just booked my flight today. I got to change. I'll look at the options. Is it a public meeting? No. It's going to be secret. We're going to hide hide behind closed doors. But we're going to have big windows so everybody can watch us. Yes, it's a public meeting. It's going to be noticed and everything else. So I just need, who's going to help me put the agenda together? I will. I'll put it up. You put it together. So Thursday, January 31st, 7 p.m. Yep. Location TV. If Cam, not you, but we can talk to Seth, maybe the portable camera or something will let us know. We just have meeting minutes to do. All right. Move to adjourn and sign no, documents. We have meeting minutes to approve. We already did them. We did them. You did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was you. You Where was I? Looking at my calendar. Seconded it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did not. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> That's the problem when you go for a um, meeting for um, three seconds. <laughs> Five hours with one break. I this is terrible. <laughs> but anyway. I made a motion. Motion to adjourn Second. by Mr. Vignani, seconded by Miss Canfield. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Yes. Good night, folks. Cam, thank you.